so let's call the finance committee to order at 5.03 p.m. for March 25th, 2024. We call the select board meeting to order. There's no like, microphone. It does none of the work. Uh, oh, so you're having yeah. Let's call the select board meeting to order. 504. Right. And I will call capital to order at 503. Sorry, 504. Fine. <laughs> we all agree on time. Just so this sounds causal. There's a causal relationship with all these. I'll do 504. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so minutes for the previous meeting were sent out by Jim. Um, do we have a motion for approving the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I see a correction of a small typo. Okay. Well, you guys are going to really be testing me tonight. Um, we need a second. <laughs> Let's have a second first. Oh, I'll second. Okay. okay, thanks. What's your take? It's only. Twenty dollars. What's wrong? Um, fourth paragraph. Regarding account two ninety two fifty four hundred. He typed twenty two thousand two eight six. We approved twenty two two six six. Say again the number, please. Twenty two two six six. That's the correct one. Okay. Thank you, John. Welcome. Any other seconds? I'll second the motion to, uh, did you move to a minute? Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll move to a minute. I'll second that. <laughs> okay, all those in favor of the amendment, oh, any discussion on the amendment? Okay, that's unanimous. Um, all those in favor of the minutes as amended?
Um, we knew we were getting to this point last year when we looked at the, the um, budget that we had last year. So I don't expect to do anything about that right this second, but just keep that in mind as we get to the end of all of these budgets and then talk about this. Does anybody want to talk about this now before we get into anything else today? The reason why um, I gave everybody this chart on the OGA funding was to show that this is not adjusted for inflation. This is actual dollars from the state. And, and the reason why we are OK is because we are so conservative in our adjustments for revenues. And yes, we do cover operating expenses. We do cover operating expenses out of free cash, but it's because our um, formulas are so conservative. And I just hesitate um, doing that, adjusting our formulas so that we can cover our operations budget, budget because the state is and has shown to be an unreliable partner when we have serious, when they have serious crisis. They, have, they do non C cuts, they do I mean, I remember Mitt Romney just decided not to pay the elementary school a half. Yeah. I mean, you would have thought the elementary school payment, going through the school loans, you know, program um, and match funds, that they would pay their share. But he didn't that year. And so we had to cover it. And so as a result, part of the reason we do so much from free cash is because I feel so strongly about conservative estimates of our revenues. We always generate free cash. And if we need, then we, we should have a separate meeting beyond the budget time with Brenda if we're going to talk about <coughs> adjusting those formulas that don't generate free cash and make less conservative. Than, um, so I, I personally don't think that we should adjust that and have less conservative estimates for free cash because that free cash is there to spend on capital. And we're not spending much on capital. Um, so what was estimated for like a year, like last year, um, revenue and what was the revenue? I mean, we, we hear it's conservative, but so what? what's the difference between our estimation and our actual revenue? I probably don't have that figure in front of me, um, but we had um, revenues. Oh, yeah, I do. I have that figure in front of me because we, we uh, Julie and I talked about that this afternoon. Um, we did 2.6 million in local receipts last year. I mean, I'm just talking local receipts. Um, we got no sound from, we couldn't figure it out. That was fiscal 23, and we had budgeted a million six sixty three. So that was pretty good. Um, part of the reason we were up was because we had received um, over 200000 for a project by one of the nonprofits just right before the end of the fiscal year. Um, Overall revenues were, were not up that much because you budget for um, real estate taxes, you budget for personal property taxes, and, and that comes directly off what you build them, but you're never going to get everything that you, 100% of what you build, you're never going to get that in the year that, that you're collecting on. So, Probably overall, I want to say overall, our total revenues were about six hundred thousand more than what we had budgeted. That's a great question. And thank you so much for that answer because I was going to ask how is free cash derived this year? And it's so good to hear, you know, that your your revenue projections were still conservative, but they weren't um, as conservative as what you might think in the in the free cash because you've got a two hundred thousand um, dollar I don't want to call it a windfall you've got a two hundred thousand dollar one time um, revenue source uh, from a grant I, I went on to the Gateway's free cash certification sheet and found a few other smaller 
um, one-time revenue sources that went into this. See, I'm getting nothing well. for me. I couldn't see the actual, what? the large grant that was in there because that was probably part of the universe. Mm -hmm. I plug into, uh, plug into your there speaker. There were some other, you know, yeah. other small one-time things. Um, MEMA EMPG grant, the Jail Diversion CIT grant, SPED assistance grant, totaling about $15,000. So I guess my, my, um, my question, and I also went on to the towns um, and DLS. DLS does the, you know, the, the uh, dashboard. Um, and they have a really great free cash use trend um, page that, that you can follow. And what it shows is, um, this. I, I went out to the free cash use trend and it shows the use of free cash historically back to FY 2017. It shows, and I wish I could, I wish I could show it, um, you can all go on it. Um, it shows that, um, it shows the budget amounts, it shows the amount of free cash and it shows the amount of free cash as a percent of the budget. Generally speaking, the amount of free cash as a percent of the budget has declined since FY17. It's gone from 9.8%, and there was, a, there was a year 2018, it went, it went up significantly to 11.6%. From then on, it's essentially been declining, and now it's down to only 5.8%. So it's showing, uh, to me, that shows that there are more asks whether they're one-time warrant articles or whether it's been used to feed operating expenses. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. Oh, and what information? Is this being recorded? It is. Okay, that's good because I'm going to need it for minutes later. Um, and then there's another, um, there are another couple of rows that shows overall free cash use and um, the percent of free cash use. And while the free cash percent of the budget has generally declined since FY17, the free cash use has increased from 62.7% in 2017, now up to 84.9%. So there actually is, you know, um, despite conservative revenue estimates, which is, which I completely support, there is deterioration. That and mm, we're still conservative on revenue estimates, but we've gotten a little more aggressive with them in the last five years. Okay. Okay, yes. that's good. To know. Uh, most definitely, um, due to a concern that our free cash was always coming out at way too high, and so. There was an effort to make it conservative, but yet a little more realistic than what it used to be. So I, I, I want to say that, y yes, it's declined, but I'm not so sure that that's a bad decline. Okay. It was somewhat in, purposeful, in is that what you're saying? What's that? It was somewhat purposeful. Yes, it was. But if we were to use, if we were to use full cash, a free ca all, all the free cash in its entirety, we're digging ourselves a pretty big hole. True. For the company. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. But I also want to say that, um, the nonprofits on a regular basis do give us one-time money with their building uh, permits because they do improve their campuses on a regular basis. There's um, even if you even since 2008, when um, there was that crash, that you can see consistency in pulling building permits. And while we shouldn't rely on that. It is a regular free cash source, and 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 we get on. Yeah, I think basis. I think of the last five years, three of them had additional monies from the nonprofits for doing building permits. Right, they improve yeah, their campuses on a regular basis. So, uh, it's not to say that we should count on it. No, but, no, definitely. But not. it is a, a source of regular revenue for free cash. And I also don't disagree uh, with the state's uh, lack of commitment uh, to, uh, to local aid. So, you know, we've got a double whammy here. I think we can, at this point we can only control what we can control at the moment. Um, but you make a good point. Where are we? Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. I was going to say, while we're on the topic of structural issues, I. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll say it again, you know, I, I don't like how we're funding scams at the moment. You know, I think we should do something, have a plan at some point to bring that on the levy um, and not pay for it out of free cash. Just 
annual reminder, I guess. I do agree, but I also think I heard him say that his goal is to make that, uh, what's the word, revenue neutral, so that he's not coming to the towns and, and charging us, that, that his goal is to get it, and he thinks that he can within a few years? Is, did I not hear that? Or Yes. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's five five-ish a year plan. Yeah, is to do that. I mean, you're not going to have it see it overnight, but um, yeah, we definitely made we're in going in the right direction. It wasn't it was going in a unsustainable direction, and now I feel like it's reversed. It's just going to take more than a few weeks of Josh being on the job. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But but that's the only thing that makes it because I, I totally agree. It's a recurring expense. It should be part of our recurring expenses. But if he can make it neutral then I'm less worried about it or at least closer to neutral or at least closer yeah exactly yeah anything well, going to revisit any of the like wasn't that our plan to yeah so I think we're going to get through the goal is to get through the rest of the budgets tonight if we can knock on wood and um we'll see from there if we can get to that tonight if not we'll talk about that next week Anything yeah. else, anybody? I, I just want to mention on the letter, I had asked you all to um, support a letter for the bill um, for uh, rural aid, but uh, for schools, because the, the only thing, I mean, schools are just a large proportion of our budget. And um, the idea was to support this legislation that was really had wide support statewide. Unfortunately, it went to Ways and Means and then went to the Education Committee and the formula has been gutted. So when we met on Friday this past week, um, we decided, um, or we were advised by both Joe and Natalie that, and then I talked to them later um, Friday evening, um, that it was better to focus on the budget right now. So this is just a draft letter that um, the Mohawk um, School District is sending out. So I. Um, the letter that I anticipate asking you to support, I'll ask you to support a letter like this for next week when I get the figures um, together and we adjust it. But I just didn't want you to forget that we were going to try to send a letter. Yep. We got anything that did to do to increase revenue will be good. All right. Let's go to capital. Thank you. Sure. Run this piece. Yep. Uh, give me a second here just to pull up the. Yeah, uh, where I put my cap. So, um, before we get started with all the capital report review, I just want to direct everyone's attention to page four. Um, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee met uh, several times this year um, to. Uh, review 23 uh, requests that came in and then just as a reminder to everyone the capital improvements planning committee does not uh, initiate requests it simply reviews requests that come in we try and put requests with um, however much foresight the departments give us onto a capital plan um, that we're actually going to be working on making two capital plans um, but uh, yeah that's that's typically what we do and then um, while we're not necessarily tasked with finding um, funding sources for all these um, I I did want to go through just being a member of the Finance Committee and try and find potential sources and also use it as a mean to uh, means to consider the financial soundness of the town um, and then on page four here we have the the priority list the way that you know capital kind of thinks about these things so we typically give um, in our recommendations uh, which is all these really are um, priority first to pre-approved or pre-funded projects. These are projects that are in flight that are usually uh, over multiple fiscal years. Then after that, we consider things that are of safety or health priority, then uh, operational importance or um, preventing damage to our capital, further damage to our capital assets. Uh, then we look at things that are uh, more proactive and then finally uh, others. So. Going through this plan here, we'll um, go to the first page. We have uh, two requests from Deerfield Elementary School. 
One is for the uh, classroom and uh, uh, classroom uh, flooring. Um, this is a multi-year um, project. And then we have another one for uh, air conditioning. So this is the phase two of the air conditioning. Uh, both of these things here would most likely have to come out of free cash uh, or another, another source. Um, they don't have their own funding source attached to them. Uh, and, and we've given both of these kind of a priority one. Um, what I want to do is jump to the other two that are like this, and then you know I can I can go through the others as well. But uh, um, the the next one that we have that doesn't really have a funding source that um, comes along with it is the the seventeen thousand dollars server replacement for the municipal offices. <clears throat> We've been pushing this um, can kicking this can down the road a bunch. We're we're now in a in a spot where the server is no longer in, in under warranty. Uh, so, so getting this repaired is, is, is going to be an issue uh, if, if we have any issues with it. So uh, for that reason, we, we gave that a priority too, which is kind of our, our highest, highest priority you know, for things that are not pre-funded or, or uh, already, already in flight. And then lastly, um, I'm going to go down to the uh, senior center. Um, so the last thing that we had here that did not have, uh, this is on page two, by the way, the last thing that um, did not have a, uh, an obvious funding source was the senior center van. So that was uh, to the tune of 12500 This would be Deerfield's portion of that. Altogether, the funding sources that I, or sorry, the um, requests that I just mentioned all total 127900 So um, there, there will be a shortfall if we were to use capital stabilization for these. We don't have enough money in capital stabilization to uh, fund all of these. Um, the, the rest of the capital requests that we came through, that, that came through, we either um, recommended that we do in a later year, 2026 or later, or um, they, would, they would come through uh, either um, or, or get funded by grants or would be paid out of enterprise funds, things like that. So. I'm, I'm happy to walk through those those items, but um, you know, given the state financial state that the town's in, you know, I wanted to walk through those first and see if anyone had any any questions on on those items. Can you recap a little bit of the discussion around the senior center van? Yeah, so um, the senior center has uh, a lot more uh, people who are taking advantage of those services now. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, the, um, going back down to the senior center van here, the capital improvement planning committee thought that this was of um, operational importance, which was um, why we gave it um, priority level three. Um, this really is kind of key to their operation. It's really hard to get seniors around. Uh, in this case, the van that they're asking for is a 14 seat van, which is the maximum number of uh, people you can have without having to get a CDL. So this would really help, or, or have someone uh, driving with a CDL. So this would really help out with the uh, operational portion of their uh, um, programming. And then also uh, the other towns are all uh, voting this as well. So you know if, if Deerfield doesn't um, kick in for this, um, the senior center could uh, end up losing the opportunity to purchase the van. The, there's a a sizable grant from I think it's DOT I believe right um, yes sizable grant for the van we've been using the the one we got from Hatfield for a gift which was really great and um, uh, we've been staffing enough for Chris has been doing some driving um, we're finding a lot more seniors want to come but can't come so uh, <coughs> trying to expand the um, seniors that are kind of stuck at home and want to come to some services and also they do they do some trips every every year and it would would allow them to to expand that um and it's um while it's a lot of money it's compared to what a, a new van would cost it's a really good deal if we all split it the three ways and and take advantage of the grant so go ahead um depending uh, so we, i don't know where deerfield's town meeting falls um, mm -hmm. in relation to the other member towns but is that something that we would want to vote contingent on approval by the other towns if we do head to town meeting first we don't want to commit the money without the other towns you are first. 
Yeah, I think we we're are first, first, right? I think we're no, just second uh, this year. We're second. But, uh, Sunderland, no, we're second. Sunderland. Sunderland is first. Sunderland is first. So, then, so it's just something to think of um, when it does come time. We haven't typically done that, but we certainly could. If we, um, yeah, that's a good point. If so, if we, if we don't do it we're holding up funds um if another one of the towns does reject yeah. it so if we can vote contingent then it would it would free up the funds immediately if the other towns any either of the other towns oh. rejects it okay that's a good point um is it like mobility assister i mean like have you yes it yeah it'll have it'll have the you know everything needed for ADA compliant. You know and wow uh, I, for I, I twelve thousand five hundred. I'm suddenly for, much for, more in favor of it. Yeah, I was picturing for, like yeah. a fifteen passenger van. No, People, like, I think it's a very sizable <laughs> grant. I think it's a large portion coming from DOT, and then the other towns are splitting it. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's a very nice, yeah, brand yeah. new and all nice. set up. What is okay. the uh, Trevor? If you know the agreement, um, three towns. If if two of them vote. Does that obligate the third town to kick in, or I don't think for capital, not not uh, for this. I no. don't believe for this it is, but um, yeah, I don't I don't <laughs> think so. I think for the budget, the annual but like yeah, okay. budget it is, but thank you. Yeah, so um, the grant is actually going to cover eighty percent of the vehicle costs mm -hmm. of ninety thousand eight hundred. And this vehicle has uh, space for two wheelchairs, I believe. Okay. So each of the member towns are going to be uh, kicking in the last 20% and Deerfield's portion is 12,500. So this is a pretty substantial grant funded yeah. uh, capital expense. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Hello? Oh, is yep. there any, would there be an alternative like renting something? I'm just thinking of all the school buses that are sitting up up the street during the day not doing anything. Maybe think outside the box, could we rent something instead of buying something? Just a thought. I'm not sure if they would take a wheelchair. They're not wheelchair. I'm not sure. But they may or may not. It might limit the time that, that, that it could be used. And then also, uh, you know, since this is a, this is a, you know, just a, a capital committee plan where you know we look at the I, I can't I can't really speak to that um, yeah. directly that would have to be uh, something for uh, Jennifer but um, yeah I, I don't I, give, given that this is like an 80% grant cover I, I don't know that we're gonna get money like this again um, anytime soon so my concern with rental or leasing well leasing first of all does contribute to the town's overall indebtedness so we have to be careful with leases and then the other thing with rental is with with the town only paying twelve thousand five hundred dollars toward this i think it's a very quick very quick payoff if we were to buy it as opposed to rental then again i don't know what a daily rental cost is for a a handicapped access van i'm not sure they would rent to us due to the liability but i don't know just okay just yeah. a thought so we will incur insurance and maintenance and gas costs, recurring costs in upcoming years if we buy this thing. Right. Um, and I think I think she has she um, her presented her budget accordingly. Budget. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so that, th those cover the uh, capital requests without funding sources. Uh, and then um, moving on. Can I ask on. a question oh, sure. on the elementary school one? Um, yeah. So the air conditioning, last year was 45,000 and this year is 72 and next year is 72. So they're doing a few classrooms at a time, right? Yep. Um, is there, do you know why it went up so much from last year to this year? Is it just that this year it's more expensive or are they doing more rooms? Or? They're doing more rooms. They're doing more rooms? Yes. In, in this phase, or the first phase, they started with three classrooms and now um, I think they're doing six. Yeah. I, I so if we needed to, to get this down below 
the amount we have in our capital, whatever stabilization, could we ask them to do like mm -hmm. four rooms instead of six or something and I stretch so. it and out I think another they were, year? They were able to take the rebates and extend the rooms to uh, last time, so they might, you know, we might maybe this year we. In much as a great value that is, maybe we just say we can't quite swing it this year. I had been talking to Darius a little bit about that, just telling him we don't have any money for capital this year. And I think he has some projects like the flooring going on. We'd love to keep up with it, but if he understands if we need to wait a year, and he goes, he understands there's other departments that need capital, so we can't always be the one. So if we had to pass a year, he, I think he understands that. We'd love to keep going, but especially with AC, because it just, yeah. I, I was just gonna say brutal. that uh, air conditioning to me is a higher priority than the flooring yeah. because the air, you know, it's just so bloody hot now on the shoulder seasons. Yep. I mean, you just get into June, July, May and June and September and October now are so hot. The kids are just so uncomfortable. You can't, you can't study and, and focus when the rooms are over 90 degrees. It's just not healthy. And then on another thing I think to just ask Darius about is I, I know that um, that derivative cost includes a 40% uh, Eversource grant. So this strategy here may be maxing out whatever the oh, okay. allotment is. So we could be leaving money on the table by not doing it. You were talking about um, rebates. Um, Whatever they did in August, uh, they just got a rebate back on that for about 48000 that went back against their budget. So um, they were planning on using that to help with something in regards to that. Yeah. Oh, to help offset? Okay. Yeah. So it would be offsetting a portion of the cost that doesn't show on the capital project plan? So I, I the don't actual, know that answer. I would assume that they were expecting that plus this seventy-two thousand to do more. That's that's what I think. But okay. Yeah, the the, the original capital request was for one hundred and forty thousand something, one hundred and forty-four thousand. Okay, that makes sense. So the seventy-two is, um, you know, with the rebate. Any other questions before we move on to some of the grant matched projects? No. No, okay, great. So the next thing that we have here is the Bloody um, Brook Covert replacement. Um, that is uh, 25,000. There's gonna be an MVP um, grant for that. Um, I don't know if there's any color you wanna add to that one, Carolyn. I know that we, ha we have the 25,000 placeholder here, but. We have under um, MVP, 2.0, we have the cash for the 25 pot potential. It was just an estimate for engineering. And then the um, MVP grant would cover that we were applying for. The governor just put money towards this. We found out about this last Thursday. And um, the governor is putting money towards culvert replacement. So this has been identified as a choke point out here on the Bloody Brook, so the intention is to put an open bottom culvert there so that mitigate flooding in the village here. All right, so the anticipated MVP grant would cover the full reconstruction. MVP 2.0 would cover which part? That's cash that we already have now that we as an MVP committee could vote to cover for engineering. If that's engineering, what we, okay. Yep. We, the uh, the $25,000 piece. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Dunn just, we know it's hundreds of thousands of dollars, but we don't know if it's three or 400 or six or 700. So, just depends. So uh, it's good to know because even if the MVP grant that's anticipated, if the town for some reason is not awarded that grant, the engineering will be in place for a future grant. It has to be done anyway. Right. Okay. That is correct. Okay. We're, we're having, um, through a small grant through Conservation District, we're having uh, field geology, both Nick Miller and John Field walk the Bloody Brook to help us figure out how we can mitigate flooding. And I'm hoping to take him over to Eastern Avenue and Grave Street to look at that area too 
and um, at, at the north end of town as well because there's a couple more grants. There is no match this year for 604B, 319 through DEP, and we intention is to apply for the planning grant on that, and hopefully we can do something over on Eastern Ave and Grave Street as well. So we'll have more information after this next, this Thursday. But there's nothing for Eastern Ave or Grave Street on this, but no, okay. Because we don't. I know it's more than a million dollars. I don't know how we're going to fund that yet. The but idea it's is not on a future year either. I know. It, it, we need more information, Margaret. Okay. And that's what we're going to do with um, when we do the walk down here. On also, Thursday. it's not going to show up on this if there isn't a formal request sent. So okay. just to remind everyone, we don't put the, the, the Capital Improvements Committee um, is not where these requests originate. So the only requests that, that, that are going to be on here are things that are submitted by department heads or, or committee folks. But we are trying to get them to put more requests in from you know, more than just a year out. So uh, we will probably start to see more of those going yeah. forward. As soon as, as soon as we have more information, Margaret, I will put it together. Oh, no, that's fine. I was just, I was looking for clarification. I was wondering, what, actually, I was wondering what the $550,000 was in, in well, FY26, but Mark explained it. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then uh, the, uh, the, the next two capital requests that came through for FY 2025 were for the Ford F-350 and for the John Deere loader. Um, the, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee just simply did not think that this was going to be financially feasible this year. Um, we've already done this before, um, but we decided to push this off to FY 2026 um, for the, the reason of the you know, financial status of the town and then also um, you know, just in case we're in a situation where um, the, uh, the new director may want to you know, change the strategy. So, um, we decided to push this off. Um, I will state, though, that we're on borrowed time for both of these, and we really shouldn't be pushing this off much longer. So uh, then that brings us down to a few other projects here. So we have uh, two grants that came through. Um, one was... Um, for stormwater and then uh, stormwater asset management, and then another for um, the uh, sewer wastewater treatment facility asset management. Both of these um, have grants, and then the, the match would come out of uh, enterprise funds, most likely for these. Um, stormwater will come out of. Oh, sorry. Out Not, of uh, the, the special emergency fund. funding that we got for 2021, and that's been reserved, set aside. Yeah, thank you for the clarification there. Yeah, not not out of the sewer enterprise fund for that one for anyone listening at home. Yeah. <laughs> um, then the next one is the uh, sewer uh, truck replacement for snow removal. Some of you may remember that we just uh, purchased a truck for that. Um, <laughs> it turns out uh, that truck that was being used to transport people between the two facilities um, could also be used, um, well, a truck that is um, uh, used for ferrying people could also be used for plowing. And unfortunately, it's not this truck so, uh, that we just purchased. So this one will be traded in, and then we will be able to have someone um, who uh, uh, works as an operator also take care of snow removal with the, uh, the, the new truck that would be purchased. This would come out of the uh, sewer enterprise funds um, and would uh, keep us from having to use contracted services or something else for, for plowing um, those, those, those areas. The next thing that we have is the water supply piping for um, Old Deerfield. This is another one that uh, we think would probably come out of the uh, enterprise funds. Um, then moving on to SCEMS, we've got a, a few things going on there. So one of them is a replacement stretcher. Um, this is going to be um, something that we'll probably be able to uh, do out of a SCEMS um, reallocation. Um, so there was an um, uh, exhaust system that uh, we had v already voted on 
uh, for uh, SCEMS, and um, it turns out we were able to get one from Greenfield, so we can reallocate the money on that for the replacement stretcher. And I think we were all here when when that was presented. Wasn't that coming out of the rent fund, though, because it was going to be part of the building? I think the rent may have been the intercept vehicle charging stations. No, I mean, last year when we talked about it, so, I thought that um, oh, last exhaust year. thing. So was, the, the 30000 had been set aside for the exhaust system that um, Josh felt was not needed. Okay. So the reallocation of that to the station alert system, I think, was, was the goal, right, Mark? Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Th th that is correct. I yeah. actually misspoke there. Um, so I'm not sure what the reallocation was for the stretcher then. So uh, um, there was a life pack that we got. Uh, oh, grant that's for. right. Yes. And so that money that was going to, I think it was 44000 that the life pack was going to cost um, was then not uh, set aside. We had set aside for it, and then we got the grant. So that was freed up talking money. about the cardiac monitors yes. yeah yeah so we had one cardiac monitor that's being covered with a FEMA grant and so that's what you're talking about yep. using that for instead okay yeah yep. um, and then in addition to that we actually had two FY 2024 requests um, so one of those was the station alert uh, system that was just mentioned and then we also have the intercept vehicle so the intercept vehicle is actually uh, coming in two pieces. There's one for 60,000, um, that'll be a reallocation. Um, and then 15,000, uh, so 60,000 is for the uh, vehicle and then 15,000 for the, uh, the, the charger and that would come out of rent stabilization uh, for a total of 75,000. Okay, so I thought we were just talking about the stretcher coming from the cardiac monitor appropriation. Um, so the stretcher is going to come from retained earnings, and I and that's what you have on the on the line is, yeah. So retained earnings. So that's going to come from retained earnings. Yeah. And I, sixty thousand is coming from retained earnings for the intercept vehicle, which makes more sense to me. Um, at least that's what I had heard previously. Yes, that's okay. what I believe, Brenda. Okay, great. Yeah, I, th I think I think for the intercept vehicle, it's a combination of the three. I don't I don't know if like, yeah, um, the reallocation of the cardiac monitors was partially used for one or the other. I'm not sure. Oh, I, um, there might be um, too many funds here. Okay, uh, being used. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not Cause, sure. Because because okay. Okay. They they have 133,404 in retained earnings. And 80,000 of that is going against their current or their FY25 budget. So that only leaves 53,400 um, basically for them to use. So, however, that gets allocated, I don't care, but they <laughs> okay. just have 53,400. <laughs> um, Brenda, you know what? We'll go. We'll go over it yeah. on um, what tomorrow. And, and I mean, no Wednesday. Yeah, and Wednesday. there's forty. There's forty-four thousand available from the cardiac monitor being um, uh, funded by FEMA. Right. So, however, that gets worked out. Fine with me. We just can't overspend retained earnings. Yep. Yeah. So actually for the, I think the spreadsheet's actually wrong for the intercept vehicle. So what I. What I actually have is we've got a combination of grant retained earnings, a possible credit, and then the uh, the, the rent for the fifteen thousand portion. That's going to be right. The, uh, the fifteen thousand is coming from the rent stabilization. Right. Yep. The charging part is coming from the rental account. Got for it. sure. I know yeah. that. Yeah. Which well, makes we'll, sense. we'll verify the math on okay. Wednesday. I'm actually just going to pull this out right now. So, okay. So we'll have more information then on the station alert and the, re, the station alert system and the intercept vehicle for the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. We can. We'll, um, just ver we'll just verify the. We'll verify it. Uh, we we did the math that night when they were here and it did work out, but we're maybe misremembering exactly the numbers. Yeah, well, th there's so many things being slid around here that, you know, I'll, I'll make sure that the math drives, but I don't know that there's going to be much else to report, assuming that the math is okay. So yeah. if the math isn't, then we'll, we'll come back and revisit. Right. 
We have a SCEMS meeting on Wednesday, so we'll just go over the math. Um, Margaret, if there's any changes, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. I'll let Mark, Mark, I'll let you know too. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. Just for the minutes for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we already talked about the senior center van. Uh, the next request that we had was um, a uh, floating dock structure. Um, this would be uh, Deerfield's portion. Um, the uh, Waitley Capital Improvement Planning Committee um, is going to review this for uh, FY 2026, so we just simply push this off a year. But uh, yeah, we're looking at, uh, even though it's Call Tri Town Beach. There's only two towns left, so it'll be uh, half of uh, the total cost, so uh, 16k. So that, that's going to go to the 2026 capital plan. Very quick question on that one. Um, do, is that related to um, accessibility by any chance? And could the towns partner up and and uh, look at ADA grant funding for it? It's not related to accessibility? Well, okay, no, I was just wondering. It, it, it is handicap accessible, though Ken told us it was you could get wheelchair up there. Oh. But um, I don't know if we could get a ADA grant for it. Okay, I was, just, I was just curious about available yeah. funding sources. Yeah, an another big portion of this was for being able to have guards uh, have a vantage point out there, lifeguards. Got it. So, yeah. For kids, yeah. Yeah. Because there's less guards, so having the guards elevated and closer to the kids yep. was a safety thing from Ken's point of view. Guards. I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think there's fewer guards. Um, I, I know they're making changes to the guards, but the guards have to changing go of the guards. to the, and do, they're running the, uh, the parking you know, lot, right? Yeah. The oh, yeah. Lot. yeah. So there's less dedicated, you, you know, you don't have a parking lot person there. So you're going to have the guards go and do take care of when a car pulls up, potentially. Okay. So you have potentially less coverage. So the idea is to have more safety by having the I elevation. I think they used to do that with the guard that was on break just did that. Like, because you have to rotate off of, so they still have the same guards guarding the water portion and one person does the. I feel like that, too, I think. That is a, yeah, I don't know. I, I think we should check. What, what can I, I don't think it matters financially, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. I just don't want. I don't want us to say in a recorded meeting that there's less guards because I don't think that that's true. I think uh, they're providing the same guarding security that they ever have. They're just reworking the way they're employed in there correct. when they're not up there or something. No, I agree. And, I, uh, I don't yeah, want to okay. misinterpret what yeah. Ken was <laughs> saying to us, but he felt it was a safety uh, improvement to have I think, the Yeah, I think it is a safety improvement, but elevated. I, I don't think they have fewer hours. So. Okay. Then uh, moving on to the library, this is more or less just a, a placeholder. We like to, you know, the committee likes to track all these, so, you know, we just have a placeholder for, for that. Um, the next thing that we have is the Leary Lot Design and Construction. So um, this is still in flight here, um, but it'll have its own sources of funding, most likely. Um, the next is the uh, 1888 building. Um, so we still, oh, question? Yeah, so Leary Lot, that's, that doesn't require approval from us, right? That's already in place, there's other funding, or is this, like, we're gonna be committing different town funds that we need to um, do something about? The capital request piece would, uh, I, I guess, the select board, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think that would be potentially ARPA for the, the part that we would have to match, so that would we, actually go through the select correct. board. As far as I know, yeah, ARPA I was approved as a funding source for our match, so that we're all set. Yeah. So that would not okay. need to go through town approval. Yeah. What is the match? ARPA, ARPA funds. ARPA. No, no, what is the dollar amount of the match? Um, we actually don't know yet, because okay. we haven't signed the contract for the $2.4 million right. uh, grant that we got that will cover a lot of the expenses that were originally we were gonna match. Yeah, it's, it's close to 500000 but it's somewhere in that range. Yeah, we don't have a final number yet. We don't yet. have the contract documents yet, Margaret. Okay. And we also have, uh, for green infrastructure, we have MVP funding for some of the green infrastructure. So that's a little bit more complicated because there's three funding sources, actually. Yeah. Okay. What 
is the um, I'm sorry, may I ask a question? Uh, on the Leary Lot uh, design and construction, um, what are the anticipated ongoing maintenance costs uh, for the Leary Lot once it is complete? Um, you're gonna have annual um, cleaning. We don't, since we have never had pervious surface before, um, we don't know exactly, you know, it depends on the storms because you get grit coming in with incoming um, you know, water, storm water. So we don't know what exactly that is going to be, but it would be at least an annual cleaning, Margaret. Okay. That we would hire someone to do and at this point. Landscaping for greenscape, anything <coughs> like that? Well, we're, we're um, planting native plants in the rain garden so that there be minimal maintenance, and we're hoping then um, the neighboring businesses would be willing to just keep the surrounding area attractive. Okay. We all, we're putting picnic tables out there, and of course that will attract some, you know, rubbish pickup and stuff like that. So I, I don't know exactly, but we're hoping that the businesses will, um, they're donating money for um, benches and stuff like that, so we're t hoping that they will participate. That would be a good way to keep the cost yes. off the highway budget. Yep. Do the EV chargers probably need some sort of maintenance over time? Is that? I don't know. Tim would probably know more than me. I don't really know that stuff. I don't have a, I don't know that there's a maintenance, scheduled maintenance thing, but obviously electrical stuff breaks down. Um, and I'm not sure what the agreement is with charge point, which uh, I think is going to be the, the overall collector of revenue and so forth. So um, we should ask Chris Nolan to give us, a, mm -hmm. you know, his best knowledge about that. We'd have to do some research. What long term would be? Tim, you own an electric car. Let's ask you all the questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Other Leary Lock questions? No, go ahead. Uh, and then next we have the 1888 building. Um, so this is kind of TBD still, but again, wanted to have this on the plan. Moving on from there, we have some road repairs. This is kind of a new addition um, to the uh, capital plan. We're, we're just trying to, in our early stages of adding things um, to a, a five and 15 year plan, we're, we're trying to get as much as we possibly can down for this, starting with uh, Wheatley Road. Um, this is something that uh, the committee's recommending, but we're probably gonna be holding off until at least the fall of 2024. And then moving on from there. Um, Excuse me, Mark, I just wanna oh, speak sure. for the record. I have, some, I have some pretty significant concerns about, um, about s some of these roads and the current use of the roads and the, um, the town's investment in them. Um, I think I said this actually at the information session. I, I think in some cases we're going to really need to partner with our nonprofit educational institutions. Um, for, for example, for Rice's Ferry Road, um, that road is owned by Eagle Brook on one side, Deerfield Water District on another side. Deerfield Water District does not go up there to use it. Eagle Brook actively uses that road to dispose of all kinds of construction materials, and so they have created lots of wear and tear on that road. So I think there absolutely needs to be a broader community discussion uh, to partner with them on funding in, in the future. Certainly don't disagree there, thank you. Um, and then the last thing that we have here is capital stabilization. Um, after all that we went through, the committee did not make a recommendation to fund the capital stabilization fund because <laughs> we're probably going to have to draw from it. Hmm. So that's it for the capital plan. <clears throat> okay, thank you. So these will come up for a vote as part of going through the warrant. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's that's the plan. Now, now, now. I guess we, we turn that over to the finance committees, uh, the, the the finance and select board, uh, finance committee and select board to uh, 
you know, go from there. But that's that's the capital improvement planning committee's capital overall plan for everything. Piece of it. All right. So Casey, you have your hand up. I just wanted to let everybody know that there has to be a hearing. The select board has to host a hearing to go over the capital requests. So there will be an opportunity. Um, we do have to post for that hearing. Um, Mark and I discussed that today, but we, Mark wanted to be able to present to finance and the select board at a joint meeting before I took that further with the select board. I think I would remember. Do so. Do we want to vote financial finance committee support for each of these items? Would that be helpful? Is that what we did last year? I think so. Did we do it item by item or the whole thing as well? It was I, don't I think it was whack. the whole thing, Julie, because it, it you're the and the select board would recommend the whole thing as well, I guess, one way or the other. Okay, um, because oh. it. I think most funding has been dedicated already except for the few items in the beginning that mark addressed should we wait till the next meeting to get clarification on mm -hmm. the funding sources for scams and the school a, a bit oh, about the, the ACE. Yeah. school yeah yeah and are we going to ask them to so I just did, uh, I did quickly go through the numbers and they do it, it's covered um, like you said um, but it's just how it gets split up we were we were sliding it's confusing because the numbers were getting slid around um, and poor Brenda was getting changed every week so I'm looking at the FY 2025 recommended column and if it worked and I'm just I'm not sure I'm with you so if I work up from the bottom so Waitley Road 25,000 it says hold off to fall 2024 MVP so we would that would not we expect it not to show up on this warrant there, it might be MVP funding and it might show up in the fall town meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next one up, 1888 building. We're going to skip that. Um, next one up, Leary Lot. That's like ARPA funds and stuff that also will not show up on the expected not to show up on the town meeting. Correct. All right. Um, library has already been voted. Floating dock is going to be next year. It has a little check, but it probably shouldn't, right? Like you pushed it off to next year. Yep. Yeah. Um, senior center van. We need to identify funds to support the um, all the skim stuff. Brenda, I think you just said that that's that's identified within the skims world and is already in what we've discussed. Correct. Um, within their budget. Um, Except the fifteen thousand that needs to come from rent stabilization from rent. that will be voted, that will have to be voted at town meeting. Yeah, because okay. that's a Deerfield fund, yeah. not not right. a enterprise right. fund. Well, and of course the retained earnings portion. All all of that will have to be voted, but it all it will all be in an article. But it's not looking. It's already in the budget that we discussed for skims. It's not additional funds that we're going to have to add from anything else, right? It, 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 it is. There's there's a portion of it that's going to come out of retained earnings, and then the fifteen thousand that comes from rent stabilization. Um, the amount that's already allocated to the cardiac man <laughs> monitor that just needs to be uh, okay. reallocated to that. But most likely not from like free cash or capital stabilization. Right. That's the real I question. See. That's what you're. That's yeah. what you're worried that's about. That's my real question. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. Nothing out of there. Correct. Okay. So far, we only have the twelve thousand. Twelve thousand five hundred. That's the only one that we've talked so about far. so far yeah. in the okay. recap. Yep. Mm -hmm. we got a long ways to go. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the all this, um, the stormwater asset management grant match that comes from emergency funding that's already in hand, yeah. and then the others, all the rest of those come from sewer funding. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, and then. Doo -doo -doo -doo. The twenty-five thousand is an MVP grant, so no match. So that will not need voting at town meeting, right? That's that's in the ninety thousand, right, Carolyn? The ninety thousand for that yeah, grant. Yeah, that's okay. uh, that's from our two point oh. Got it. Okay. It's or it's we just have to vote um, how we want to spend it. Um. Oh, the twenty-five here. Yeah, right there. Okay. Yeah. 
And that's okay. just a ballpark. It might be a lot less. I mean, I'm assuming okay. it will be less. But and then the 17,000 for the server, the 72,000 for the AC, and the 24th, 26,400 for the flooring. Those are all seeking funding, which is probably going to be capital stabilization. Yep. Plus maybe free cash. maybe some free cash, yeah. right? So how much is in capital? What is? Yeah, that's a good question. How much? Yeah, that's it's about right. It's a it's a touch over one hundred thousand. So we we right. do have a shortfall. The 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 totals that we just went through uh, come up to 127,900 and um, I'm not sure exactly how much we have but I think 107 is correct 107 yes so that, that, that is that. correct 20,000 so we're 20 about 20,000 20, yeah. um, Brenda can I just ask uh, that it, the stormwater asset management grant match uh, the $34,250 the existing emergency funds is that what is the account? What is the account that's? It's a. It was a grant from the state for our July 2021. Okay, storms. it is that one. Okay. Yep. Is Thank it you. normal for us to spend the entire capital stabilization? No, no that's very much not normal. No. That's a good no. question. No. Yeah, we probably so, uh, are going to want to stop doing that. Yeah. Because um, we'll have none left. Yeah. Well, as as it sits right now, which will change, we have about. I think from your spreadsheet about six to six seven thousand thousand left. Yeah. In, yeah. In, um, you mean in the, in the it, that's down. that's a, a that a free cash that's right. still available even if right. we leave yeah. two hundred thousand on the table at the end of the fiscal oh. year. Yep. Right. Okay. So that sixty seven thousand is available for. Um, and the one oh seven. So if we could leave some right. in the cap and spend that instead. Exactly. Draining, I don't want to say draining, using stabilization funds and not replenishing them can also hit the town's credit rating. So we yes. should be really careful about, and, and just <coughs> what a couple of years ago, the capital stabilization has been as high as what? I, a, what is a that? A few million. The, oh, it was at eight, 800, yeah. 900,000, yeah. something. So like higher than was, that, actually. I think we were in the millions. For a little no. while, weren't we? No, With we have never reached a million. Regular no, we never oh, the regular stabilization. Oh, I've yeah. got yeah, that regular confused. Stabilization. Yeah, regular okay. stabilization. Yeah. Yes. So, capital stabilization fund is fairly recent. It was established, and then the goal was like to build it up to a six million, years ago, maybe, and then five let years it ago. fluctuate around that with a projection of of capital that we wanted. Um, but I would say two years ago we gave up on that and started spending it. Um, so we've been. Um, spending down our reserves for a couple of years, which is not good. Um, what is the available amount of free cash um, if if uh, no capital stabilization? Uh, would we be able to fund all hundred twenty-seven thousand no. uh, nine hundred dollars from free cash? We yes. would. So this okay. leaves two hundred thousand in free cash. Right. These numbers we here. We don't have to leave that much. We didn't last year. Or less than 200,000. It's just a benchmark. But with the budget growing, I'm still concerned. I know. I'm concerned. We need to we need to reset how we fund this town. We either need a prop 2 and a half override or we need a we need to cut. Yeah. We need a prop 2 One and a half. Override. I think we need to I think we need to do we need to do both, you know, the town needs to do its due diligence this year mm -hmm. and maybe plan next year for an override that takes an awful lot of work and an awful lot of yes. uh, community input. So uh, there would be time to do it for next year. Right. There certainly isn't this year. No, no, right. not at all. And we, I've been saying this for a couple of years and it, you know, we've been making it out and each year we're like freaking out and then we get to it. But each year we keep cutting and not cutting into, but we keep tightening the strings or not tightening the strings and adding more services really is what what this has come to and yep. because we're realizing what it what it takes when you have a dedicated finance committee dedicated staff and we're focusing on these larger projects it takes more money than if you do nothing and like don't change rates don't do anything let things kind of fall apart um, <laughs> we're we're having to kind of dig ourselves out of that and i think it's really important to say we need to have a 
two and a half override so that we can start putting money in for capital stabilization so that we can fund this projects planned projects year after year after year and um, and that we pay for the staff that we have and then yes also look at are we efficient now is there other things that we should cut should we cut services in some area but I think you're right it's going to take a year to educate the public so they don't come for our heads <laughs> and, and, so. and as it pertains to capital <laughs> we have some departments that are really good like mm -hmm. you know public works is you know or highway you know they're really good at having a 20-year plan for anticipated equipment um, purchases and as we get other departments doing this we're gonna have some years where we have peaks and valleys and mm -hmm. in my opinion the capital capital stabilization fund should be used not not to raid when we've got a budget shortfall, right. but to, to, to kind of take to that level that out and yes. just clip exactly. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just have it be a flat line. Yep. Okay. On that note, I'm going to throw something out there. I make a re I recommend that the finance committee support using one hundred and twenty seven thousand nine hundred dollars of free cash to fund the items that you've specified in here that don't have a specified funding source yet. Um, again, totaling one hundred twenty-seven thousand nine hundred dollars. Do we have a second? I'll second that. So that is um, both the elementary school items, the server replacement, and the Truck. van. Yep, the van. For the senior center, was there anything else? Nope. Okay. Any discussion? And that would leave how much in free cash? Uh, 27 out of 267, so 140-ish. Mm -hmm. And that leaves the cap stabilization alone. Mm -hmm. right. That'd be good. Oh, and that 12,500 of that be contingent on approval by the other member towns yeah. for, this, for the van. Right. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And second that amendment. Wouldn't that, okay. uh, maybe I'm not understanding, but you're asking to fund all of the capital out of the free cash that's 200000 mm -hmm. and that would leave... Um, no, it would have to reduce use of free cash in operating. What, what do you mean by that? What, what's that? Uh, well, Julie, I, 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 so if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, this, we, when this was put together, we left 200000 in free cash. So it's... So, no. so if, I'm, if we make we, this zero, we have two hundred and sixty-seven. You'd have like seventy-eight thousand. We in have. Free cash. Uh, no, we have I'm not recommending left. reducing the free cash base for next year. I think that that we're going to find that we need that uh, for next year. I'm um, actually um, my recommendation is actually reducing the use of free cash in operating in order to fund the capital items. So we would have to cut something in operating in order to do And we already, yes. It would increase, the, it would increase the deficit, yes. Um, it would increase the deficit, yes. Yeah, that makes sense. So we have to find okay. $60,709 to cut out of the budget. I kind of hate to do that when we have Money in the stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. Cap capital stabilization and general stabilization. When are we going to be bonding for the library? Because this is gonna this is gonna matter. The, our use of funds is gonna matter. Probably by next fall. Not bonding, but borrowing. Okay. So. Okay, so I'm not with you yet. So, so if we do, if we do that, that means we have to cut sixty thousand from the budget somewhere. Is that that what you're saying? Uh, we'd have to we'd yeah. have to cut the amount of free cash being uh, being used to fund operating expenses. Now, okay. keep in mind, we do have, um, or the finance committee I think has it, um, currently uses $120,000 of free cash to fund the reserve fund. Right. So I'm not, you know, I, I'm not discounting the fact that we could reduce the amount in the reserve fund in order to plug the gap. 
Um, I think that's a possibility. Of course, I haven't seen your email yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, yeah it, we have been using more and more of it over the last few years. But sometimes it's just easier to use the reserve fund than it is to do appropriation transfers. Mm -hmm. So with the um, ability, the flexibility that the municipal, um, the new muni law gave us back mm -hmm. in 2017, you have more of a chance to um, reappropriate. So I, I see, I, I, uh, I get where you're coming from and I can see that as a possibility. I mean, Carolyn mentioned possibly, mentioned possibly taking the, D, the, del the elementary school flooring out and pushing it off to next year. I don't know if that's something that is, is feasible. I mean, maybe this amount could be reduced. Um, um, what I said was the air conditioning in my mind had, had a higher priority. priority. Yeah, because it was a safety issue. I felt like it was a health and safety. It's not saying that flooring is not as well. I mean, because it is sticky. We could hold we could hold on flooring for the year and just have to do it, you know, next year. I mean, we've been doing it for f five or six years, yeah. trying to get through that building and pull a nasty carpet out. Um, so that would bring the amount down to one hundred and one thousand five hundred. So I think your motion needs to include um, everything you said plus, plus leaving 200000 available in free cash okay. for next year. I'm happy to amend the motion. What does the Finance Committee think about pushing off the elementary school flooring for a year and reducing the total to $101,500? I don't really, th I don't know, that, that doesn't seem like a significant amount of savings for me. I'd, I'd rather stay on track, I think, okay. with the flooring replacement. That's my opinion. For now, I'm going to amend my motion that we recommend funding the total of $127,900 from free cash and reducing the amount of funding, uh, free cash funding to operating by to say six, six by sixty thousand by sixty thousand in Something, order 61, or whatever. Yeah. yeah in order to leave the remaining free cash balance of two, balance of the free cash base of two hundred thousand dollars do we have a second yeah, so <laughs> another way to say it is you're going to fund some of the operating budget with capital money right so another way to say it in my mind. Why don't we find out what we're cutting to? Do we have a do we have a second on that amended motion? So that we can discuss it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll second that. Okay. Um, um you you're saying that because we're choosing not to spend the capital stabilization, but there isn't that much in capital stabilization. I don't know. No, I'm saying that we're gonna cut the the operating budget by that amount of money and fund it with the free cash that we were going to use for, capital. for operating, but now we're going to use it for capital. Right. So because we're just swapping dollar bills. Because free cash isn't supposed to be used to fund the operating budget. Right? Is that so the point? I, yeah. Go ahead, Is that the point? Oh, no. Absolutely, 100%. Um, and I also, I would, I'd like to, I'd like to um, ask Brenda her expert opinion as the town accountant and budget manager about draining capital stabilization for the capital projects and what impact that might have on the town's interest rates and credit rating and, and how you feel it as a practice. It, um, how does it affect our credit rating? I would, I would never venture to guess. Um, right now, they, they, they look pretty favorably on what we've done so far. I don't think it's right to use capital stabilization when we've reduced it so low already. I think we need to be building it back up. 
Thank you. So I do like your idea of using free cash. Um, I, I think um, there might be savings outside of the omnibus budget, like you said, reducing the reserve fund amount. Um, I, I, it's possible that the SCIMS budget, budget might be reduced a little bit again, um, but I have not gotten that number from, from Josh yet. So there's some other savings that we could see, so I'm not sure that we need to um, worry so much about knowing where we're gonna take the money from. At this point, I think we can vote this with the idea that we're gonna do something and over the next few weeks figure out how that's gonna work. That's, that's my thought. Thank you, Brenda. Yeah. I was, uh, throw my opinion out there, I don't disagree. I don't know that I'm ready to vote that right now, personally, um, because I would rather get through all the budgets and then say, where are we gonna take this and what are we gonna cut? And that discussion may be, we're gonna cut capital or we're gonna cut operating or we're gonna cut something else. So, all right, so, so all right. Um, but that's just me. <laughs> We don't have to vote this right now either. We can wait until we get through the other budgets. <laughs> now this conversation has come full circle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as much as I hate to draw down from capital stabilization, I, you know, I could foresee us having to do a little column A, a little column B after we get through the rest of these. I think Julie's right. We don't need to decide tonight. Okay. So I'll move to table that. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion <laughs> on tabling it? All those in favor of tabling? All right. That's unanimous. Five zero zero. I hope you took good notes because I'm not going to be able to figure mine out. <laughs> what happened? But, um, but I feel like we had a solid discussion. Do. Um, and I don't think we're ready right now to ask the elementary school to push the floors off yet. We can wait a, a week to have that discussion. Yeah. They are meeting tomorrow night. Who is um, capital? Elementary school. Oh, elementary school, yeah. Do we want, Trevor, you, are, you're going to that? I am, yeah. Um, do, do can you just that? mention and to pass, I know it's not on their agenda, but in passing that this topic came up and about we're talking about it, but we, about, possibly pushing the flooring yes. off but we don't want to ask them yet but yes. that might be something I, that we I did talk to Darius about that you know, okay. before but yes oh, we'll good. definitely bring okay. it up to the committee for sure um, so just to recap we had we want 200 in free cash we have about 67 right now in the budget that's possible uh, to have instead of negative um, and we have about 127 in capital that needs to get well 107 in capital. oh 107 in capital capital stabilization. capital stabilization oh right right we have yeah. that in capital stable but we have 127 of um capital projects that we want seven nine nine of projects that we wanted to do okay all right that's good thank you okay and that's still 120 in the in the reserve fund right that's kind of what's in the budget right now. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, these numbers are what's in our yep. book in front of us right now. And and you have the new which might change. And you have the new um, DES number in this right. figure. Okay, good. Great. Okay. Thank you. So what time are the assessors? I saw them walk by. Six thirty. Six thirty. So we have eight They're minutes. getting organized. Oh, get out. Um, <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> okay. So can we do a couple Miscellaneous ones? Well, well um, do you want to revote the treasurer collector salary? Sure. So, treasurer collector salaries, it's 145 5110. I handed that out to you tonight. Yep, and that's 151,850. Um, yep, yeah, so, well, it's actually 151,900. Okay. Yep. We voted that already. Right? But if you yep. want to revote it because it's fifty dollars. Yeah, it's fifty bucks off. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah. What's the number We're again? On it's uh one forty five dash fifty one ten. Except it's already in our yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, do we have a motion? 
make a motion for a re-vote. I don't know how to word it. Suge a new suggestion for the amount for dre treasurer collector salaries, account 145-5110 from previously voted 163-003 to a new amount of 151-900. How's that? That's a lot That's of words. That's great. Beautiful. That's great. Very nice. We have a second? <laughs> you get a second. gold star. <laughs> All right. Mark seconded that. So what happened? Yeah. Um, there has been a request um, to reduce hours to 35 hours a week, um, knowing that um, there'll be more babies to take care of. And I think it's very doable. And um, the select board has already voted uh, in, in, a, in approval of it. I think we have to re-vote. Just the you 50 said. bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah just the 50 bucks. Yeah. Okay. And when they're done. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's the 1827 down from 2088. Is that hours? Right, that right? it went from 2088 to 1827. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. To 35 hours a week. Okay. And she feels like she can still get the job done. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this is the lady that did three jobs at once for a while and two jobs for over a year, so I think she knows. <laughs> she knows what she can do. She does. All right. Um, any discussion? Just to clarify, it's, um, it, this is amending the FinCom's prior vote of $163,003 down to $151,900. Yes. Right? Okay. That's it. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous, five zero zero. I, I make a motion to the select board vote um, one, 151,900 dollars for um, 145,5110. We um, voted the incorrect number. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Tim McDaniel, aye. Uh, Carolyn Nessa. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you. Let's do assessors. I'm going to get out of the way so you guys can see. I'm just going to oh. move over here if you two want to sit together. You do what I do. You keep going back. All right, Tom, baby. Exactly. I don't it's remember the right. day. Trevor, you can sit over here. I got I got um, assessors. So all of, all of you know Chuck and Frank, right? How you doing? Okay. Hi. Um, so we'll just we'll go right to their budgets and we'll start with uh, 141-5100 for assessor salaries. Yeah, no change. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think she put those in your box just in case you needed them. But <laughs> normally they were right up front, but I didn't see them. But yeah, yeah so if they were in our box, but thank you. Okay. Yep. All right. I I motion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I move to recommend the sum of eleven thousand dollars for account number one forty one fifty one hundred assessor salaries for FY twenty five. Second. Yep, that was the town meeting. Keep going. It was after that. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Opposed? Oh, good. All right. Library. I was surprised. I thought we had an opposition. That passes unanimous five zero zero. Then uh, the next page one forty one. Did we already vote this? Did you? You know what? I don't know if you did. I don't think we did. So okay. I make a motion that we approve eleven thousand dollars for the assessor yep. salaries account one forty one fifty one hundred. That's the grant. Second. Second. So on that grant, it's a grant. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those right. in favor, Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. For the project. Right. It's a grant. And Casey, do you want to mute? Oh. Grant of that amount. So we've got that amount. The next grant isn't that grant. I think Is it the just there? I think, I think you're right. I think. I, I know I'm right. Casey, yeah, you're unmuted. Right. I know I am right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm we'll move right on to the next. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're not right. We'll, we'll move on to the next one, 141-5110, which is for the assessor's administrative assistant salary. Make a, a motion. make a motion for the Finance Committee to suggest the budget for assessor's administrative assistant salary account 141-5110 for $77,699. Second. 
Discussion? So this is just uh, the step increase uh, with the 2% COLA and there was one district that um, gave a raise to, um, to Karen uh, for the coming year. Nice. It's generally accepted. Right. Yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous, five zero zero. Um, so far, so good. So I don't know that we did this one either. No, Probably not. Yeah. yeah. So I make a motion to approve seventy-seven thousand six hundred ninety-nine for assessors administra administrative assistant salary account one four one fifty one ten. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Okay. So let's move on to assessor's expense 141-5400. Excuse me. What? Yeah, effectively flat. I think there were a few adjustments here and there, but nothing oh. significant, unless people have questions. Uh, we need a motion. Make a motion to recommend the uh, assessor's expense uh, in the amount of 19,110, uh, account number 141-5400. Second. I think uh, all of the increases here are contractual. Okay. This year. It just seems Some like and when I look at each individual one, they all seem very small, but the total is a 3% increase. So I'm just like reading through it again. I guess the software licenses went up a bunch. Oh, no, not really. There's $70. Well, most of them are relatively small adjustments, yeah. All right, any discussion? Questions, anybody? The title searches? Um, yeah, I, I, I was going to ask about that. Title searches. I don't know that I, we've ever spent that money, have we? Um, not that I recall. Um, I'm trying to think of the last time we actually had a title search. Um, but I have to go back and confirm, but yeah. Is it, like, why does it say budget code 157? Oh, that, that I don't it, know. It was a new uh, budget code that Karen had me add a oh. couple of years ago, and that just hasn't come out. <laughs> okay. It was in red, so, you know. So yeah, I I'll take that out for the next one. <laughs> so that's a good question. You probably overheard that we have a bit of a budget gap, so. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find We're everything. Looking for like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Any few yeah. cents. <laughs> so if we've never spent it, then why did it go up $125 this year? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I'd have to go back and just confirm. I, that, that's one where I thought we were flat. I didn't, I didn't think we were increasing it, so I'm, I'm trying and, to And recall. it could be yeah. that there's some specific title searches that, that need to be done that we just haven't tackled. Uh, I, I don't I don't know the answer. I'm just throwing something out there. Yeah, I that's a good question. Okay. I don't know the hundred and twenty five dollars is worth them. Maybe I don't think we should hold on. up the vote for it. Huh? I don't think we should hold up the vote to find out why it went up. Okay. We can revisit later yeah. if needed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of feel like just moving on, but <laughs> it's fine. Any other questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. Nope. All those in favor? That passes five zero zero. Do you guys want to vote it? Um, yeah, select board will. I'll make a motion to approve assessor's expense account one forty one fifty four hundred in the amount of nineteen thousand one hundred ten dollars. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. So registering deeds fee that went up a dollar has really got me. I'm not happy about that one. That was, that was what we budgeted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if whoever made it, probably just put in a little bit of an increase. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, so that's a question. <laughs> well, you that know passed. what I mean. Yeah. So, and for some things, um, that passed. I think we, I mean, I'm looking for more money, but, but like a lot of the flat things, I worry about like when it's like a lot of postage and things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does cost yes. more to buy okay. those things. So. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right. This is a little more honest looking, but mm. <laughs> You're right. All right, so then we have the last assessor's budget, uh, the assessor's quinquennial certification. I'll make a motion to recommend the assessor's quinquennial recertification in the amount of 22,000, uh, account number 142-5400. Second. Discussion? This is usually build up this, this account and then spend it, right? It's contractual, so yeah, so it's not always even, but yes, yep. that's correct. Yep. So that was actually my question because it was the, the last actual expense we have in 2023 was 24700 but then you went down last year to twenty two. So it can be a little lumpy in terms of how the services are, are provided. Okay. That's, that's correct. I, I think the encumbered amount or the carry forward amount was carried forward because there were things that Patriot Property was going to do some additional things that didn't get done during COVID. That's correct. Right? That's correct. And, and uh, is some of that happening this year? Do you know? Because we've spent the 19000 this year, but just curious. Because I hate to keep carrying forward those amounts when they're not being spent. That's, that's the only thing. And, and so yeah. then it begs the question is, is do you need the 22000 or could we be using some of the carry forward? My, that's my, my thought on it, but. Um, so it's in the, the oh. reports that we get if we dig into that, right? How much was carried forward last year? Um, Do you have it open? So the carry forward amount was 16387 And we budgeted 22000 for this year. And we spent don't know what 19. more is, is, okay. is supposed to come through. So maybe you're, maybe you're going to spend all of it this year or, or a good portion of it. So does that the carry forward amount 16? Mm -hmm. You said so. Does that go on top of the 22? So mm -hmm. we're really mm -hmm. saying that's right. we have 38 yeah. to spend. Right. That's correct. Yep. And but if it's not carried forward, it's going to revert to free cash. So that's right. So, yeah. <laughs> so we really. So, yeah. so, so I, I do know that there's backlog that they were working their way through. To what mm -hmm. extent they're through that and what incremental there is coming through to this year, I'd have to confirm exactly. Mm -hmm. But I do know that they were, were working through the backlog. I, I don't know if we could take that down, but that's something that we could certainly follow up on. Okay. How much time do they have to follow up on it if it's going to help well, us this year? I, th I think what it affects... Probably the way to approach it is go ahead and vote the 22, but then before you carry anything forward next yeah. year, just check and then let that go to yeah. free cash if we don't need it. Right. And that but way, yeah. next yeah. year when we vote it, it doesn't go from like 2,000 to 22,000 and we all freak out, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that, True. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm inclined to think that all of it will be used, just a matter of timing and when it comes through, but I would just want to confirm that before I would make that definitive statement. What, what is, do you know what this is? Like, what do they do? Do they go and, like, verify like, properties are valued at the right amount or something in, like in, that? Inspections, carry up, yeah, okay. exactly, yep. I wonder yep. what it yep. was. Yep. Same thing with your re your certification, right? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that's values, right. home values. Right. That's okay. right. Yeah. That's correct. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. So another line that could be revisited if needed. Yeah. What the what gets recertified? I don't. I don't know. Property, what, value. Property, value. property value. Property value. Property. Yeah. Value. So what are they like? Checking on themselves. They go around. They they assess they, my house. That's right. Okay. Right. Okay, but is when they assess my house, is that the recertification? Probably. I'm just wondering well, what the yeah. process is. Well, they're they're constantly looking at at home values. I mean, they the sales that. of homes and right. So they don't look at every single house every single year. So they go through a cycle where they would right. select right. So they would go through that, and recertification is with the state to verify within within a period of time. Yeah. What's been valued? Sorry. 
but over a period of time, you need to get to the 100%. So the state's blessing what they did. That's correct. That's okay. exactly right. Yep. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? That's unanimous, 500. Zero, zero. Make a motion to approve the assessor's quinquennial recertification account number 142,5400 in the amount of 22,000. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. So I have two items to follow up on title search amount yeah. and the, uh, the carry forward. Yep. Great. So Great. we'll follow up. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Thank Thank you. Excellent. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. See, pretty painless, huh? <laughs> Thanks. All right. What's next? Um, do you want to do schools? The sure. school budgets? Let's do schools. Okay. Um, so let's start with. Um, let's not start with Deerfield Elementary. Let's start with Frontier Regional 310-5400. So we started to look at this. Is there a sheet out there? Yes. Oh, okay. Doesn't I have that. Like I was looking for a regular budget sheet. No. Uh, those, those were handed out last week. Last week or the week uh, okay. before? 310-5400. 310-5400. John, do you need a copy? Next week. Yeah. Put it on your to-do list. What's that? Put it on your to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> that really long, long list. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So last week we started to talk about this, and then the question came up: Why does it say 1.65 percent increase when? the thing that the school handed out says 0.81% increase. So I, I printed out for everybody the, the information from the school. That 0.81 is overall. So if you include um, the school and the transportation and the capital, add those all up together, there's a 0.81% increase. The individual, um, if you look on this sheet that I handed out, where it says general fund, that is the this this account 310-5400 plus the transportation is included in that, right? Yes. Does that add up for you? The 315-5800. Yeah. So how did their transportation drop? I think the DES went up 80 percent. I think they're absorbing it by, aren't they using E&D to play, uh, pay for some of that? And you mean Frontier is? Yeah. Oh, baby. They yeah. had, oh, they, they said this at the meeting. Mm -hmm. They had uh, rural aid funds. Yeah. Right. We're going to use rural aid for our I, They had something else. So they, so they weren't covering it from E&D. It was okay. like they, there okay. was a different, I can't remember what it okay. was, though, why no, it was. Covered. And the rural aid yeah. program is in big trouble, so something to think yeah. about for next year. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, and the transportation came out late, so it's not going to be in this handout. But they did talk about that, and they said that it's oh, right. it's the way they're funding it, and they're doing it differently at Frontier than at the elementary schools. So all the elementary schools were going to go up. Oh, it might. I wonder if it's just because it's. Um, Partially reimbursed from, like we get the state reimbursement. Does that affect yeah, it, or they get money back from yeah. the state? But it's it's pretty it's small because now. Because it's a regional school. Fourteen numbers, though. Mm -hmm. but it's about eighty percent. Yeah, that's of not accurate. No, it, it is accurate. Oh. Mm -hmm. Don't you, question my numbers. We <laughs> 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 just got Whoa. The, the transportation bid came in after 214. Right, but they didn't change that. They did. This is this is the one that they sent us just the other day. It's 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 they didn't change this number. Mm -hmm. Now did they change the split? I don't know because gotcha. I don't have that information. Okay. But the total is the same. So I stand corrected. <laughs> I just have um, a, a question on the 214. It says total appropriated um, four million three hundred seventy-seven seventy-seven zero, and then on this 
document, it's got yeah. a different number. It, it, it does. And then it's got a different number up here, and, and I'm just, which number is real? So, so the 4,472,664 is their, their general budget of 4,377,770, and your transportation of 94,894. Not the capital, right? Okay. Right. It does not include the capital. So the uh, expense detail sheet is correct, right? Correct. Yes. So do we have a I've motion? I've added this like eight million like, times, but I'm going to do it one more okay, time. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I move to recommend Frontier Regional School 310 5400 for 4,377,770. Do we have a second? Anyone? I'll second it. I'll second <laughs> it. <laughs> Please. Uh, um, so their overall budget increased 3.14%. The reason we're only at 1.65 is because we have fewer students going. Nine fewer. Nine right. fewer students going here. And ten more going to tax. I was so. just gonna yeah, say, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Absorb that yeah. Attack, so. yeah. Yeah. We pay no matter what. That's yeah. true, <laughs> yeah. It is. Any discussion? Questions, thoughts? No, all those in favor? All those opposed, all those abstaining. I abstain. Uh, that passes 401. Um, let's do mm -hmm. transportation yeah, next. Do That's three, three right. right. I'll try three. to get it right. Oh, I did, all right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry. Select board, board needs to go. Go ahead. So, this is the um, Frontier Regional School. I make a motion to approve. Um, is it four million three hundred seventy-seven thousand seven hundred? And seventy dollars for account three ten to fifty four hundred. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Chairman McDaniel, aye. Okay. So excuse me. I, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, I'm being dense. I think. Where does where is capital reflected on our detailed expenditure? There is no capital. There's a debt payment, and that that is in the omnibus budget. That's it's another page. It's three ten fifty eight hundred. Okay, but what is funding the uh, fire alarm panel? They're not. They're, they're absorbing. They're, that hasn't been passed yet. Got it. Okay, yeah. I was confused. Yeah, I was no. like, where is this reflected? Right. So what are they doing with it? Because they took it out completely. They're going to fund it themselves, I believe, right? Okay. That's, That's what they're doing. I'm almost positive, right? That's what I recall hearing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because right. we were discussing that today, wondering what they were doing with it. I believe they're funding it with school funds. I, I'm almost positive. I know there's a small capital. Uh, this, so that that this, this is just interest, I believe. This is just interest. Right. Yes. Taking yep. care of all their capital themselves this year and paying off the debt. Okay. I'm happy to make a motion then on that one, if you'd like. Unless Go for it. Sure. Okay. Um, I move to recommend the sum of $19,360 for Frontier Regional Debt Service, account number 3105800 for FY25. Second. So this is debt excluded. Correct. It was voted a few years ago. Yes. And this, yeah, and they're paying the whole thing off and it'll be done is what they said. Yes. So. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining. All right. That passes 401. Okay, so uh, make a motion to approve Frontier Regional Capital Account 310 5800 in the amount of $19,360. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. All right, so transportation, which is 315 5800 That's the other part of the general fund budget. I make a motion to recommend Frontier Regional Transportation 315 5800 for 94894 Second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining. Abstain. That passes 401. Make a motion to approve Frontier Regional Transportation Account 315-5800 in the amount of $94,894. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. All right, um, let's go back to Deerfield Elementary School, 350-400. Um, they have not, the elementary school has not voted this yet. The committee meets tomorrow night and they will vote it tomorrow night. So we can either vote it now pending their, you know, contingent on them voting this number, um, or we can leave it and revisit it next week. My, my personal preference is to wait. Okay. And I do um, have a question. I, I, I do have a question that I'm hoping Trevor they can, can answer. answer. <laughs> uh, Trevor, I have a question for the mm -hmm. Deerfield Elementary School sure. or administration. Yeah. Um, the transportation contract that was just bid yep. includes for Deerfield a flex vehicle for over $75,000 each year. Yep. Deerfield is the only one of the four Union 38 schools that has this vehicle. Yep. Why? It goes uh, because apparently they can't turn the large bus around at the top of the hill and get under the underpass. So I think they use a smaller vehicle to get. This only goes to um, Pine Nook Road. So. So the reason and, and i and i think i think the administration's looking hard at that i'm really glad because that's a quite a sum of money over the course of three years it is um, you know we have other roads in town that i do know parents have driven the kids to the end of them hawks road is a perfect example exactly where the parents have driven yep. the kids to upper road just to catch the bus um who's a road uh, beyond right. the triangles another example yep and i there's no doubt in my mind that conway and you know, Waitley and Sunderland have similar types of roads, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I appreciate them we looking at that. We are really looking at that hard, yeah, yep, having those be, discussions for sure. That's great, thank you. Yep. Yep, yep. Do y'all know what caused it to go from 5.4 million to 5.3? There was a, uh, I don't have all the info, but I do know that, and I know Darius is looking at a, a, the routes and a lot of other things about this, but I think that um, oh, yeah. I think that one of the things um, so that it was a it was a whole new contract. It's a, I think a five year contract. Um, they restructured it. We used to pay fuel surge fuel Sur surcharges, and I think that we don't now. It's all kind of factored in. They had to pay um, more for. Um, drivers because they were had some drivers retiring having trouble hiring new drivers um, it was only one bid you know for the package um, but I know that talking with Darius he was going to work hard to try and figure out could could routes change you know could we okay. adjust so this for reduction is sort of oh no so the transportation. Let me, yeah let me let me get this so it was really high and we are going to use rural um, Rural aid to to absorb the cost this year, but we still have the next four years to cover. Um, we were planning to kind of use that to redo the entryway, um, you know, for the buses for the drop-off area for paving because we've got to do that when we do the other project. But um, we found it was important to do that. And then the other reduction is um, why it came down from 3.0 to one something was. Uh, I don't know if you got the email. It was about staff and hiring. They um, they were able to luck out and hire people at a lower, you know, spot because oh, nice. okay. they had some retiring and the new hires. They were able to just they were in a sweet spot of being able to get good good okay. teachers at a good rate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the educational credentials were lower so that they could pay them, you know, commensurately yeah. lower. And I think, and I think that just came to light as they were interviewing people, and Perfect. because they're going okay. through that process right now. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so let's move on. What else do we have? Um, contracted services. Oh, we're not going to vote this then. 
No, we're not going to vote it tonight. Okay. Wait, wait till, wait till that. Yeah. Yep. Contracted services is uh, 159 dash 5410. That's one I handed out to you tonight. So we did yes. talk about this in February, but we voted to table it pending you guys looking at it again. The, so. There was, I know that there was um, a change to um, consultants and that was to fund, um, we added money in here to fund the takings and the surveying and um, layout work for Stillwater Road properties when we have to take those when um, the state does the bridge. So we okay. wanted to make sure we had m enough money in there to cover, you know, the survey work, the lawyers and stuff to, to do the takings on those corners, I think. The people who own the properties, either the state, I think, owns some, or Fish and Wildlife might own some, and then there is a private entity that owns the other corner. Um, so it was just, I think it was, we were concerned that we would get to that point and not have the funds to do that work. And I know that has to be done soon. Um, at least this year, yeah, early I, this year. I was hoping that we could get it into this fiscal year, um, but mm -hmm. contracts haven't been signed yet, and uh, Casey wasn't sure that that could happen, so it needed to be put in fiscal 25 just in case. Yeah. Um, so we don't have a motion yet. Let's oh, sorry. Motion. Yes. I'll make, <laughs> I'll make the motion. Jump the gun. Hmm. I, I move to recommend the sum of two hundred seventy-eight thousand three hundred thirty-four dollars for account number one fifty-nine fifty-four ten contracted services for FY twenty-five. Second. I was on the wrong page. I had a different amount. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You, you did say, um, say two seventy-eight three thirty-four. Right. Yeah, 278, yeah, but they have three, three, three copies of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, okay, great. <laughs> um, I would ask that instead of general planning in here, um, wait a minute, where is it? Where is it? The I'm consultant? sorry, which, where is it shown? There, there was an amount in fiscal 23 for planning. Yeah. Uh, because at that time we didn't have um, a, planner a planner on board. <laughs> Yep. I see it. Okay. Yep. So we remove that. Yep. So I would ask, because this is technically a one-time expense, it's going to be uh, for the Stillwater project. I would ask that um, it be identified in the itemization under this account. So next year, we don't vote that ten thousand again. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can make that change. Or we going to have potentially uh, one more year of this for the for the takings yeah isn't it isn't it possible that we might not get all of our surveying and title searches and stuff done i think I, we he need, i think okay, we I'm need like, to i'm almost positive it's just going to be the one year okay almost positive i'm just saying like you know yeah i i i could see with all the different entities along there right that like if, if it might could take, take some time yeah. But yeah. if we make it another line, then we'd still have it there for yeah. two years. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that, you know, for anyone who expects it to only be there for one year, I, it, it could potentially spill over to a second. Yeah. The other thing I'll say, too, is that I was personally expecting this to come in much higher at, like, 25000 So to see that it's 10000 mm -hmm. you know, um, I like. Fingers so, crossed. Yeah. <laughs> What's the basis for that? We've gotten... Uh, Casey kind of figured a number that would, just based on certain... Um, uh, surveys we've done recently I think okay. I think she kind of gathered a number that would work she felt would work hopefully um, okay. if she can hear me and has anything different to say <laughs> but um, but I think that was that's what she thought would be enough to do that okay so that's all this question I don't want to interrupt go ahead go okay ahead. Uh, the this budget sheet that was handed out a month ago, over a month ago, had nothing for permitting software. Correct. That was and why now we, we tabled have it. Fifteen thousand seven twenty. Was that? Yeah, that was why we tabled it because she realized that had been left out. Oh, just a, a goof, or whatever. Okay, it was it, left, because it, because it was left it's, out. Yeah, it's a new it's a new product that isn't even totally in place yet. 
and um, and so the amount that you see in there is actually for the inspections department and for um, the Board of Health to be on our permitting software. Yeah, mm -hmm. one piece of its capital, and then because there's reoccurring fees with it, that needs to go into the omnibus budget. One thing that made okay. us a bit nervous too is that we removed eight thousand from training. We have, hmm. we have no we have no money for training right now at all. Um, so we did vote this the other night uh, because we felt the land taking was more important than the training. But you know until something goes wrong and you wish you had the training but but I think we other we, uh, other budget lines do have training in them yeah. and if there was a dire necessity right a, we could a come to you could be made, absolutely yeah. that's what we thought was the best best way forward is to help offset that increase and I have an, is I think I know what the answer is going to be uh, my question was is there any chargeable to the sewer enterprise fund and to skims and i'm sure you're going to say it's in the indirect costs it right? Is. it is can i good job can, can we take a look to see how the indirect cost no. is calculated no, no. Mm -mm, i'm not i'm not revealing my secrets <laughs> <laughs> it's going to cost you some sticky buns see, john, john she'll argue with you like she does with me it's going to cost sticky buns yeah. i have copies in here so um yeah. I can I can certainly make you copies. I'd like to see it. I just I'm yeah. curious. Yeah, it's it's uh it's it's gone up. Pretty this year. It's, it's adjustable. Every year we adjust it for one reason or another. So yeah. That's thank you. Yep. While we're on this line, we also had a note from our from the last meeting um, on the, the uh, yep. uh, there, uh, tele telecommunications. Is it? Yes, telecommunications upgrades and changing the phone system to a subscription. Mm. How detrimental would it be to wait one year to do that, given our situation? Um, what happens if we lose our phones, Margaret? That's how detrimental it is. We are already losing our phones on, intermittent, on an intermittent basis where they blank out and you can't dial out. It comes back usually, but sometimes we, Sometimes we don't have them for half a day. Yeah, it's happened where the phone system <laughs> Yeah. I'm sitting behind those desks. I know how you feel when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's frustrating. No, I mean, I, being, bummer, we, we lost our phones. For me, we, I love it. <laughs> except when we yeah, really bummer. do want to do something. can't talk to anybody. <laughs> no, I mean, we put it off. We didn't realize how bad they were. And I knew I was taking a chance putting it into the budget. On the other hand, I think this is the most cost-effective way to do it because the way we have it now, which is a box in one of our... Um, electrical closets it's pretty old-fashioned this is a new system this is a reasonable bid um, I think if we had to put it off we could we just run the the risk of it being more expensive down the line if we have to fix it and right now we are already experiencing issues with it I don't I couldn't tell you exactly how often I just know I notice it when it happens to me <laughs> How much, what's the cost that's been incurred this year to fix the phone system repeatedly? Any we haven't had, so, uh, the, I, I want to say less than $1,000. Yeah, it's less than 1000 at this point. I don't remember. The it's just un basically very cost. unreliable. And I know, you, Mark, you had some thoughts on this at the last yeah. meeting, too. So, Mark had mentioned that to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, and you'll see here that by doing this, we should be reducing our cost with Comcast. Yeah, I saw that. And yeah. I also think that the plan that's in place for uh, the system that uh, Normando would be putting in is uh, a really, really great approach. So I think uh, it's yeah. pretty cost effective based on the research I had Pat and Chris do. This is the best choice in terms of options. Is there any other way to fund that $10,000 for the, it's not really a capital expense, is it? It's a one-time thing, but it's consultants that we're hiring to yes. do it? So it's, it's 
legal consulting and um, appraisals and stuff that we would need for this, the land that we would be asking town meeting to allow us to acquire property rights over because the bridge is getting replaced. Now, $10,000 is a guesstimate. Um, we could reduce it, but at some point we're gonna need to be able to go through um, the research to acquire the properties. Mm -hmm. And we don't have plans to give us the exact um, land that we need to be looking at. So, so, so I'm not arguing against doing it, right, mm -hmm. or the amount. I'm just wondering if there's a way to, since it's sort of a one-time thing, to charge it to free cash instead of to our operating budget. And it. Well, in a sense, it'll be charged to free cash. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. yeah, I'll I know, but like, I, mean, I know. like it, it, it's <laughs> semantics. But <laughs> is the, are there? Is there $10,000 available in remaining ARPA funds? I know that, that those funds are committed. There, there is zero remaining to, to commit any funds to that. Okay. Well, the, we I, I, I feel, mind, Jolene, committed. yeah, we have them committed to other projects. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't, I don't have a list of those no, then, because I'm updated. showing my like 700,000 is still available, but I know, sorry. I know you have an well, idea. I, I mean, I'm more interested in keeping it off the operating budget, if possible, because then we could always revisit it next year if another sum needs to be put in. But this year, are, with the are there? I mean, it, every year, are there not going to be projects that you need funded by consultants? Yeah, that every year we need consulting for something. And how much do we had seven thousand in? We right, had seven. It's a general so amount that we keep in there. Mm. Um, I just. You know, this is kind of gets to the thing of like every year we kind of like we just bring it to like the bottom line instead of going, okay, we should have enough money that we, if we have projects that come up, land transfers or somebody buying a property or looking into this or surveying for that, which happens all the time, um, we should have a fund that has that and we shouldn't be so tight all the time not that i want to waste people's money but it would go back to free cash each year i'm just thinking this is kind of the thing i'm saying that we're so tight all the time that we're talking seven thousand bucks or ten thousand bucks and we're you know we're looking for that every year instead of going okay we have we have seventeen thousand in you know consulting budget each year that we can use if we need to unless it's better to come to the finance committee each year to ask for, hey, we've got a project going on, we need this funded. I don't know. I think there's a balance here between what we're willing to ask, not just the finance committee, but take back to town meeting for small amounts. <clears throat> because, you know, at the beginning of the meeting, everybody was talking about decreasing what's in the reserve fund. So the reserve fund is for unanticipated expenses that fall within what you could expect True. to pay in a budget. We so could do that there's instead. a balance. And there was an increase in the reserve fund done. Well, we could do that. Last year, I think, we yeah. Could, why don't you we could do it, but you almost well, have to plan for it, which yeah. means if something, un, if something really big comes up. <laughs> True. It's, it's, so there's, to your point, Trevor, you, it, it's a budget. You can only budget so much. But I was more concerned about taking training out than I am about, because that is an ongoing thing. That we really should, we should be planning be doing better a lot for. more training. Um, so many things. But I also know that this is a twenty-three million dollar bridge that we don't want to have to pay for. Mm -hmm. No, I I understand too, and and um, you know I, I think I echo Julie's question um, about other funding, um, and I also understand what you're saying too, Trevor, because there's always going to need be a need for consulting, and you have several different itemized well, items mm -hmm. in this account for various consulting purposes. And those can be shifted around. Yep. Um, the other, but, but the bottom line is the town is constrained by Prop 2 and a half. Yep. That's the reality. And this budget growth, this particular one, is, is up by 6.9% now. Yep. So we, we need to take hard looks at, at, at various lines. This is going to, um, it adds to it adds to the deficit, and I'm not saying it's wrong to put it in here. I'm just saying, yeah, it adds to the deficit. 
every year. Yep. I mean, since this is for an acquisition of land and it's ten thousand or more, can we can we pull it out of this and put it on the on the capital schedule? We had fifty grand in there that we started with, Mark. Yeah. And this was after those discussions. I was asked to put ten in that we were not going to fund fifty grand in capital for the acquisition, which mm -hmm. was a get, admittedly a guesstimate, but that we needed to pay attention to the fact that we had to do all this background research. So, you're so I saying, was asked to put it in here. Are you saying this is, I, I assume this money was for just, uh, was for the surveying and lawyer work or whatever we needed right. to do for the takings. Are we also going to need to pay the yes. people? Yes. So where is that coming from? We pushed that off. We did a capital request for it. I did one on behalf of the board. And that's for 26? We pushed it to fall town meeting. We, oh, don't, we won't gotcha. know what the acquisition costs, actual costs to the until landowners you have it are going to be until we do all that research. And you have a map from DOT right. to right. How, find out how much you, you have to said, take. And so this all makes sense. It's just I did this right. we're up against a wall. Oh, yeah. there it is. Yep. Okay. Fifty thousand. Okay. So, I mean, we're kind of rearranging the chairs in the Titanic <laughs> right now, but Always. you know, yeah. um, if we're looking to keep this from escalating, you know, I'm just wondering if we just pop it on the capital schedule instead and call it can a day. Can you spend capital? Can you call it capital when it's funding? You can for the acquisition yeah. of land, right? Well, it's it's, and that's, it's, the it's that's the reason it was on capital is because it's acquisition of land. Yep. Um, this so is this is like the first phase. This of is it. the first yeah. phase of it. Now, if you were to do what you heard me talking about, sorry, um, I didn't realize my mic was on. Um, I didn't hear what <laughs> you were saying. Hear, we just <laughs> <didn't> <laughs> it. it was like a buzzy noise, noise me, but there was, was yeah. Reading yeah. the article from oh. <laughs> um, the library vote, and so when you see something that's a that's a big capital expense, often you will see the attendant things that go with it, research, all of that stuff. So I would call this part of the entire project, but if we had to get ourselves across the finish line for the acquisition itself, you have gotta do the background research. So that was why in the capital discussions, Carolyn said to me, why don't we put 10,000 in the budget so that we can get right, the research get started, done. right? And then we go to town meeting for the money. If in the you want to look at it differently, we can. I worry that. I mean, I feel like we have to get started on that soon. I don't yeah, know what time do. the Otherwise bridge starts. We won't stand yeah, you. Right. The it frame. takes a takes a minute to get a survey. I feel like it's. Yeah. If we and I'm really want to run the risk of it I not beg the surveyor I know. I promise. I just have to have a plan. Using ARPA so, funds would allow it to start imminently. <laughs> Except, <laughs> Except it's not available Except imminently. Not available. Three Except months from now, yes. You, know, but, uh, you take out the 80000 from FCAT funding both years, it's gone up 10% if you remove FCAT funding. Well, you can't remove you can't. FCAT funding. Pardon? You, you, no, if you ignore it, not it. removing it. I'm not, no, I'm just saying, saying that everything else. Oh, if you discount it. Oh, got it. Just it. Yeah. up 10%. Yeah, I see. Um, you could put it on capital, and if it ends up starting before the fiscal year is over with, we can spend some of that money out of contracted services if we have it, which I think we do. <clears throat> We would have to have capital revisit this, Mark. Yeah. We'd have to vote it again. Yeah. Another meeting. So before this $10,000 was added, the, um, the contracted services line item was up 3.06%, and now it's up 6.9%. Because I think, is that when you pulled out the 8000 mm -hmm. That's the, the 10000 that's yep. the 10,000. Oh, yeah. that's I put 10, but I had also removed the training. Market. That's right, yes. Yep. And it was still up. It yeah. was well, still right. you <laughs> added in the permitting software. Oh, right. I did. And so you yes. and I put training down, down and uh, the MVP consultant went way down. Gotcha. I think that is yeah. how you got the training amount. Oh, yeah, is that a problem? What's up with the MVP consultant? Is it because we have a planner now and we don't need as much? From no, the MVP? it's not just that. It's there's a grant, there's a grant source there yeah, too. The 2.0. The MVP 2.0 program covers the consultant salary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Of two years, so 
after next year, it, it might come back or it might just be Christopher Dunn mm -hmm. okay. or the planner. Something, though, to think about um, when looking long range at uh, community education for an override. Mm -hmm. You know, the needs. If we can't swing this this year, we need to explain why it's, you know, we'd explain why it's so important and why it's included in an override amount. Right. Right. I agree. We really need to, I'd love to get a community together to study, like, really what we need to do long term. It was the last time was in the 90s or something, so it's been a long time. Other than, you know, projects, obviously, we've done capital stuff like that, but sewer. But it would be interesting to look at the budget long term. The natural override was in 96, It'd be nice I think. if we could get scum, scams to not come to us for free cash request. I don't well, know. if it was I in the levy limit, today. that's why Mark, Mark's right. made that comment yeah. several times. Yeah. I agree. Because if it's in the levy limit, then it right. falls within <coughs> that. Yeah. Parameter. So free cash is then freed up. But that's definitely an override. Mm -hmm. Can I call the question? <laughs> you bet. Move the question, whatever it is. I'm, so I'm we have like, to vote uh, yeah, on I'm, calling the question. Me. We can't say anything oh. else until we I'll vote. Suck that. <laughs> um, all those in favor of calling the question? All those opposed? All right. So we have that pass. I'm sorry, I didn't say. Margaret Beth call that passed three two zero. Um, so I think we just have to vote on this now. So there is a um, motion on the table for two hundred and seventy eight thousand three thirty four for contracted services. All those in favor? All those opposed? All right, that does not pass. Two, three, zero. Okay, I, I was plugged in. <laughs> it's all right. I'll watch the tape. It's fine. It was two, three, zero. Two, okay, three, that's all. Matters. Two, three, zero. Against. Um, let's move on and talk about other things, and then come back to this. I guess. Um, um, go ahead. You tell me what you want to do. We've got the Board of Health payroll. We've got OPEB. Um, Board of Health payroll. Okay. Can we talk about that now? Do we need Carolyn? We tabled it uh, because Carolyn wanted to come with some uh, revenue numbers, projections. Okay. And um, I don't, I don't know that changes, that's. Some changes, but I don't have them. She made some changes. She said she did, but I don't have. Them. Oh. Okay. Okay, well, sounds like we're not ready for Board I guess of Health. We're not ready for that. Ready for OPEB, which should be in Section 12 in your book. Well, yeah. Yep, exactly. Let's do OPEB. OPEB? Yep. Yep, for 41071. What tabs are under? 12. Thank you. I make a motion to recommend OPEP funding for I don't have the sheet. Forty one thousand seventy one dollars. Second. Any discussion? So this is some percentage of last year's. This is four per four percent percent of the entire insurance costs for fiscal twenty three. <clears throat> the year okay. ended. So does this include the amount for like it scams does. and it whatever and then some of it just gets funded from their correct. budgets? Okay. Correct. So this, this covers everything and then scams in their indirect costs gives us back some, the senior center gives us back some, and the wastewater treatment plant gives us back okay. some. And the elementary that is, at, that is then added to the trust fund. <coughs> this forty-one thousand, yes. It's, in, it's in, okay. Inclusive of that. Does the does it include the elementary school? It does. Okay. Yep. May I ask who seconded that motion? Thank Mark you. did. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? 
Chair Coffey. Opposed? Abstentions 410. That passes. Okay. Um, the one right before it or in that same section is the reserve fund. Oh, you, you need to do that. Too. A move Sorry. Um, to approve okay, OPEB right? funding at uh, $41,071. Second. All those, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, Tim Elchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Okay, can we go back to second? Yeah. We never had a chance to discuss it. Yes, for oh. motion, and then we no, talked we about the money went in, but I don't think you ever asked she did. She for did. comments. Did. Yeah, we had discussion. Did you? Okay. Sorry, you had a question. Go ahead and make your statement. No, I just, I'm totally against OPEP. Yeah, yeah no. Um, yeah. That's and, news to us, John. Pardon? I know you're probably sick of hearing me say that. Go but ahead, say it though. There's money, that's money we're putting aside that we could use to reduce our use of free cash, for example. Sure. We don't, and we're saying we do it because it affects our bond rating, but we don't know how much it affects the bond rating. So we just kind of, I believe we don't know. Right? It, it yeah. affects the bond rating because yeah. if you look at our audited yeah. financial statements and see an $11 million liability, um, it gets reduced by every amount, every dollar that we put in. The rating so does. The, the amount of our liability. So therefore, our rating will be better when they see that we don't have such a big liability. Yeah. You're going to pay for it. The bill comes due at some point. Pardon? The bill for retirement comes due at some point. That's the purpose of OPEC. Well, and it's, well, and it's it, you can see that the retirement insurance has been going up, yeah. particularly for the school. To me, I gotta speak my piece. To me, we owe millions of dollars on bonds that we're gonna have to pay someday. And that's on our balance sheet. It's, we're paying those now, pardon? We're paying those now. Yeah. But, so but, you, but you have a corresponding asset to go with that, so your assets are also up. It's true. All right, enough said. Um, we, I think we reserve the right to revisit this and, and the other lines as well, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we need to plug the gap later on, I'm scrubbing the budget. Right? I'm All right. Good. Reserve fund, is it? Yeah, reserve fund, 132-5400. That should also be in your, in your tab 12. Thank you for letting me cry. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> All right. Reserve fund. I, it's actually, it's in that tab 12 in my yeah. book. I yeah. Know, I just don't have it. You don't have it? How many more do we have? I almost want to do this last. Jeez, I do have that one. I agree. I, I <laughs> completely agree with you, Mark. Oh, I do. It just got miss. miss. Okay. <laughs> I was going to make a motion for reserve fund for a hundred thousand. Uh, you know, I'll second that. Okay. For how much? A hundred. Hundred. Okay. Have we spent the one twenty that we? Used last? Did we vote it yeah. last year? How we we voted one hundred and twenty thousand uh, for this fiscal year. We haven't spent anything yet, but we will. <coughs> we will. <laughs> Stuff is coming. Are there it's any coming. big? So historically, like, we don't carry any over. Of, you can't of you can. any significance. It goes back. Yeah. To, it goes, it goes right, right in. It rolls into free cash. Yeah. Well, actually, there's no nothing to roll into free cash because it's just a budget number. You reallocate it. But in the past, we've done most years a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. We got yeah. We increased it last year because we thought that we were trimming budgets enough that we would be seeing more people coming forward needing that. reserve fund support. Um, is there anything big out there you know of that's headed our way? That Not that I know of. This year. That you can okay. see at least a couple, but I don't have numbers. I won't have numbers for a little while. But there's not like a giant no, legal you know thing or well, whatever. Yeah, so exactly. On wood. That's why the statute so, says extraordinary or unforeseen. Yeah. So yeah. she said. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Um, and I think 
last year we might have used it to cover uh, the snow and ice. I was just going to ask deficit. if this last storm is going to be the storm. And that's a great question. And yep, right now we're at a ten thousand dollar deficit. But I know I just I cried when I realized we were going to be spending more this weekend, and I'm sure it's. it's she wasn't be, the only one. Yeah. I was literally outside going, how much is this going to cost? <laughs> yeah, when, when, when my tires went crunch, 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 I, I was thinking yeah. the same thing. Yeah. 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 And it went on all week. It did. Yes. Or, or whatever, yes. a few oh, days. Not yeah, all weekend, was... just, just like two solid days. Two yeah. solid days. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so. I was in um, Virginia. It was sunny and nice. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Like it rained on the west. So, can any we have thought? A yeah, we're discussing 100,000 instead of 120. Any thoughts? Are we mm -hmm. being too risky? I don't think so, and I think this might have to be something we revisit, but I think it makes sense. Can you revisit it and change it in the fall if you really had to? You'd have to put more money back into it, right? right. You, you could if yeah, you. As long as free cash is certified. Yeah. If you yeah. Yeah, but I don't think you. I I personally don't think you'll you'll need it. You'll find other means to right. to cover th shortages with yeah. other with appropriation transfers. With the places we have this year, we haven't come for it. I mean, I know we've got some space. Yeah, I was going to say we still have some time left. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Better take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? All right, so it's been moved and seconded for 100000 for reserve fund. All those in favor? Uh, it's unanimous, 500. Make a motion to approve um, 100000 for reserve fund, count 132-5400. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. All right, accountant <laughs> salaries. I don't want to do this one because okay. I don't want you to leave us. But <laughs> So should we do some of the other ones then, like uh, Dickinson Library Trust? That would be oh, so sure. great. That would be Let's a fun do one. That. It would be. <laughs> even Good boy. Um, that's for just it. on the budget sheet, right? Is that yeah. It's, no yeah, page? It's, it's on the fourth page of your budget sheet under warrant articles. All righty. For three thousand eight hundred and thirty-two dollars. We have a motion. Make a motion. A motion to recommend the Dickinson Library Trust for three thousand eight hundred thirty-two dollars. Second. Right. Any discussion? Um, do we need to put in the motion that it is funded by the Lickin the Dickinson? Library. You sure what do you is it interest or trust? It's, it's, it's interest. It's, yes, by the by the interest of the trust. Last year's interest. Is it's in. Is it because they had fundraising and money in there? This nope. Is no. Here, this is a nope. It's just it's just interest rates have gone up. Okay, gone up. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, the trust the trust has about one hundred and sixteen thousand in it. Do you want Beth to amend or just a friendly amendment that it's included? Oh, it's Call it friendly. Yeah. All those in favor as friendly amended. <laughs> <laughs> Not hostile amendment. Okay. Uh, that passes five zero zero. Zero zero. Okay. Um, do you guys want to need to do it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Make a motion to um, approve the Dickinson Library Trust payment of uh, um, three thousand eight hundred and thirty two dollars. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Tim Hilchey, aye. Chairman McDaniel, aye. All right. Prior year bills. Do we need to do that one? You want to? Yep. Um, this you'll see this in the warrant, but prior year bill for three hundred and seventy-seven dollars. It was. It's two three bills. Or What's that? There's two. One's a one's a wastewater bill and one's a correct. Uh, oh, so, so the, the wastewater yeah. doesn't show up here. I'm not. Just, I'm okay. not showing it here just because right. it doesn't affect our budget. Okay. Yep. I mean, it doesn't affect uh, free cash. Do we need to vote it here, or do we just vote it when we see the warrant? I think. I think when you see the warrant, should be sufficient, right? Okay. How about the remaining Oxford debt? 
do we need to do that now or when we see the warrant? There's nothing on the remaining Oxford debt, but the uh, uh, opioid, oh, opioid money. money. I'm sorry, I read the long yes. line. We and that and that's a that's a I have to. Um, you needed we we let it roll into free cash while we were waiting for DOR to make a decision about what they what we could do with it. And now that we know that we can put it in a special revenue fund, we have one set up. We've actually been collecting a lot of opioid money in the last two weeks. <laughs> Yes. Just keeps coming in, just rolling in. Um, so this thirty-two thousand is in free cash and needs to be moved into the special revenue fund. Okay. Do we need to vote that now, or do we vote it in the warrant? I think you can vote it in the warrant if you want. Okay. What else do we need to do now? Then really, I, I think the only other thing is um, the board of health payroll and the accountants' uh, payroll and expense. Anyway. <laughs> 135, 5110. What was that again? 135. 135. Yep. 5110. Excuse me, Brenda. What was the um, what's the article number on the unpaid bill of a prior fiscal year? Uh, Casey, you'll find it. I know. I saw it in here. I just. Yep. It's in here. Um, there's two of them. It's like a. Uh, yeah, they're in one article. Um, article five. Six, oh, article, article seven. Seven. Okay, thank you. Got it. All right. Um, count and salary one thirty five fifty one ten. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve the count and salary account one thirty five fifty one ten for one hundred twenty two thousand nine hundred and one dollars. That's not the number I no. have. I have a, a different number. 126,532. I have a new that printout from yeah. uh, February 26th. Mm -hmm. I have that one. I withdraw my motion. I, <laughs> make, I don't have the sheet. I make a motion to recommend. Count what are you salary. doing with your sheets, John? 135,5110 in the amount of 126,532. Second. All right. Maybe here. Discussion? I know this one week I wasn't. Yeah, so um, I'm on the final year of my contract uh, in this upcoming fiscal year. And so that is in there. Um, my um, hourly, I work, I work 32 hours a week, uh, that for Margaret's benefit. Um, and so in, in fiscal 24, um, we had an assistant for me for five to 10 hours a week. And um, here's, here's my thought on this as, as I was putting this together was that assistant would probably continue into the fall, late fall, and then the town would um, put out for um, a new town accountant that somebody that could work with me for the last six months. Full time, not full time. I could reduce my hours. They could, I, whatever. I, but I threw something in right. so that we'd have uh, the ability with, uh, to to transition in, into into succession uh, plan essentially. Yeah. So we um, want to be able to, and she and I talked about this. We want to be able to hire somebody so that we can effectively transition to a new accountant when you do decide to leave us and we're all going to be in mourning. Um, this like like yes. Like actually is her. Yes. <laughs> but we know that's not And possible. is named Brenda Hill. <laughs> Brenda Hill. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> but we know that's probably not going to be the case. So we need to get somebody. Account accountants are the hardest, some of the hardest financial positions to hire for right now. So when she and I talked about it a while ago, she, we discussed doing this exact plan so that we could successfully hire somebody to transition into the role over a period of time to have enough time to train. Um, and, and I'm not saying that I want to be done done by June 30th because I feel that um, if, if you need me to continue with that person to close the books, to certify free cash, you know, to work on the tax recap. I'm happy to do that on a very part-time basis. I just don't want to be committed to um, being here every week uh, because I want to spend time with my grandbabies. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. 
and my husband is tired of being retired without me. <laughs> <laughs> Retirement is very underrated. <laughs> right. I found that I out. That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I have some contacts that I have been intending to call to at least broach the subject uh, with um, some, some contacts that Joyce Muka gave me. And um, I just haven't had time. I, I, I literally can't get things done. So um, with this transition, I'm hoping that you will budget for this person to be a full-time person for fiscal 26. Mm -hmm. Maybe she'll still need an assistant, but at least somebody who's full-time because the 32 hours a week with a part-time helper is just not, not cutting it for me. Right. And I think I'm pretty efficient. And you have a lot <laughs> of experience and knowledge, yeah. Right. A new person isn't gonna have that. I think we, I will tell you that I experienced watching Brenda start as the accountant and seeing that type of succession plan happen where you had somebody that was the experienced accountant training on a part-time basis, but training, and it really provides a support element that oh, I think a new person would want. That was huge for me because valuable. I came from I came from the real world, <laughs> <laughs> that private sector, <laughs> and and was thrown into Massachusetts government. So right. um, so it was it was uh, really necessary. And and even with that help, I still felt <coughs> that I didn't know what I was doing for the first four years. Mm. Oh my goodness. And thank goodness for Tom Scanlon that he's yeah. always available. Well, when he's when he can be caught yes. that he's able to talk to me and help me through things. Yeah, if there's yeah. an emergency, he's there. For yeah. Sure. There are not a lot of town accounts, I have to say. Well, that. and I there are there are a few and I'll tell you what, they are the good ones are invaluable. Yeah, and they cost <laughs> a lot of money. Yep. Yeah, valuable. So we also need to be prepared to think about that too. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. this is a budget we do the best we can, but uh, so, the, so you said your contract ends this year. So the thought is that this new person would come in for some agreed upon salary, and then there would probably be a contract negotiated, or there would be a contract negotiated when the person was hired Potentially. for their Potentially, period. Or um, this position used to be on a grade G. I don't it know did, it, and it, yeah. And it could be put back in there. Uh, so that's what I did was I stuck it in there in a grade G step two okay. to start with. Right. Just yeah. for you to have a starting point, and then I'm sure you can you can do whatever we'll yeah, yeah. What you need to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What we can do today. Question, Brenda. With the increase in the accountant's hours, what is the need for the administrative assistant, or is it a position that could be shared with another department? Well, the the administr I I figured the administrative assistant would get me through to the point of getting somebody hired to take me take my position, and then that assistant would be, would be done. Mm -hmm. So this is very a very temporary position. Um, now it could be that whoever we hire for an assistant might be interested in the position. It might be somebody who has a lot of a accounting experience and is thinking about transitioning from another community. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping, yeah. but you don't know until you go out for the vacancy. Right. So so that 200 hours was just to get us get us through to the point I of see. hiring hiring yeah. somebody that will be me. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Nope. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Five zero zero. That was um, that was too easy, John. I, <laughs> <laughs> Say a word, I, John. I, I moved uh, the accountant salary account one thirty. I don't care. What did Thank I do? You. Did, did you guys I, vote? Did you yeah, they did. They yeah, right. we're done. Yeah. Sorry, they're still talking. <laughs> That's all right. Just trying to get us out of here. Um, I make a motion to approve one hundred twenty-six thousand five hundred thirty-two dollars for account accountant salary uh, account number one thirty-five fifty-one ten. Second that motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. All right, 135, 5400. Counted oh, right. expense? Yes. Do we have a motion? I bet I have the wrong one. I'll make a motion <clears throat> to recommend uh, 18,250 for the accountant expense 
account number 135-5400. John, you have that one, don't you? Okay. Do we have a second? Oh, second. <laughs> so 5% increase. Um, so audit went classes, up. Right? And audit. The, the yeah. audit. Um, I did budget just a teeny bit more for classes, um, assuming Oh, that, especially with a new person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, probably not enough, but, but there is some in here for consultation also that never gets used that she could use towards classes, he or she. Um, but the audit keeps going up. Uh, there's just more and more and more requirements. Gasby just keeps throwing more at us the all the time. Stuff as well. What's that? Including the USDA loans and all that. Well, that yeah, but I mean now you have to you have to you have to keep track of leases, and now now we've got the um, the IT contracts that are going to have to be considered um, for long term. And it just just like I said, it never ends. So. Yeah. Um, question. I love I love Tom Scanlon. So mm -hmm. my question doesn't relate to Tom Scanlon in any way, shape, or form. But DLS suggests that towns do change up auditors occasionally. How long has the town been with Scanlon, and is there going to be any consideration to go and out for bid for a new auditor at any time? Um, Tom was was with the town long before I came on board. Yep. Yeah. Um, His dad was too. Right? His dad was. His dad yeah. was too. Way you back know, when I started in '99. I love them both. And, I and when, when I first started, I thought, oh, well, we shouldn't be using the same accountant over and over and over again. Um, but quite frankly, he's, <coughs> he's my confidant. He's my resource. He's artists, and, okay. and he charges me nothing mm -hmm. for all the phone calls that I give him and all the emails that I send him. And um, I like his approach to things. He's level-headed. Uh, you know. Um, um, what's he's the word I'm looking hard for? When he has to be like honest to like, no, you need you're doing this wrong. You need to, you need to fix yeah. this. Or I I always ask him at the end of the year. Okay, what did you find that I should do differently? And you know what what do we need to talk about? Or if there was something that the auditors brought up, I'll bring it up to him and I'll say what do you, what am I supposed to do with this? Mm -hmm. You know, so he's he's always got ideas. We had to make some changes on on how we were handling task force money for inter, inter, uh, for, for instance. Um, so That's I, I, I say keep him, mm -hmm. but the town can do whatever, nope, whatever that's, it, it needs to do. <laughs> that's fine. It's just yeah. it's a recommendation that DLS always makes. Yes, they always yeah. make it. Mm -hmm. and yeah. She and I talk about it every once in a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not very often. I think we can do that when he retires. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't. Well, out of the, all, all 351 towns would probably kill to have him. And, and I know he, he travels all over. He travels all he over the Commonwealth. Yeah, yeah, so. And so, this yeah. does run across the stam listserv quite a bit, as yeah. Margaret probably remembers. Mm -hmm. as yeah. This question comes up quite a bit, and mm -hmm. there's not many auditors that are as thorough. Um, well, yeah, I've worked with several different, and I and I love Tom Scanlon. I was just curious about the, the procedure. Yeah. Any other questions on accountant expense or discussion? That was nicely squashing, wasn't it? <laughs> Anybody else want to say anything? Perfect. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, we're good. All those in favor? That passes five zero zero. Make a motion to approve the amount of eighteen thousand two hundred fifty dollars for accountant expense account number one thirty five fifty four hundred. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Chairman McDaniel, aye. All right. So that puts us through every budget except Board of Health and Deerfield Elementary. Is there anything yep. else out there so. that we contracted need to do? services? Right. Oh, contracted services, services didn't pass. Yeah, that's right. Well, there's always another meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always another meeting. Which is the next subject? So I, I'm, I'm feeling done for tonight. Yeah. Um, so oh, cool. well, next, dang. I was ready to go. You know, for another hour. Oh, oh, no. oh my gosh, no, you've got endless no, energy. No, no. <laughs> All right. So so here's the deal, though. Next week, April 1st, we're at 5 p.m. We can only go for like an hour and 15 because planning board has this, has the room starting at 6.30. Not if we get here first. 
Can I'm we go to another room? Can we, we can take them. Can we move all the chairs around so it doesn't look like? Can we, can we use uh, a different room? Can we go to the really? kitchen? Can we start at like 4.30? I can. It's okay with me. Sure. I can't attend no matter when you start. So. Okay. Um, and David won't Great. be here. David, David won't be here. here, but Jim will be back. So I oh, think that will work. <laughs> I'm going to be having nightmares tonight. I don't know. Okay. I am not a suitable replacement. <laughs> we thank you for doing it. Yes. So next week, 4.30. So I'll change the... That's great. And then that, that works for everybody? Okay. That works for you? That gives us a little more time. So April 8th, I'm gone. I'm available the rest of the week if we want to meet another day. April 15th is a... It's Patriots Holiday. Day. Carolyn's the only one. So we can't meet on the 15th. Oh, shoot. Yep, Patriots Day. So we so need to Can you go back? I was still putting in the stuff on the 1st. All right, so April 1st is at 4 30. Right. April 8th. Um, I'm out of town, so you guys can meet without me. Um, or we can pick a different day. Different day. All right. This is my vote. Um, Do you want a motion? No, I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, can anybody do Tuesday, the, the 20th? Ninth. No, that's tomorrow. Um, the 9th. The 9th? The 9th. I can. Yep. I, work so I will be on a cruise. Good for uh, you. <laughs> nice. How are you going to do the minutes? Ooh. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you can just zoom in. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I will not right. be available that same day. Ooh, that sounds rough. Um, well, what, there, there's this from five to six. Mm -mm. six I did it seven. because Julie was out on the eighth. I was like, oh, that's the week I get. To so we can do the ninth. <laughs> so, but it's a Tuesday. If we do the ninth, yes. the four of us can come. Everybody can here can it? come. I can okay. Can. I, I have to find a, I think I can. And we might gain Jim, so that should give so us that a quorum. Um, Want to yeah. do five o'clock so again? Personnel board has a meeting that night at six o'clock. Oh. Um, and they Can scheduled we, it last the end of we do four thirty again. It's four thirty. Yeah. Why don't we, we use another room? We meet on Zoom. They use meet the on kitchen. Zoom, but David Sharp's on personnel board, and personnel board can't meet unless David is there. What about the tenth? Oh, he'll be I back can't by the ninth. I'm out the rest of that week. Oh shoot. Oh. Uh oh. We'll be deep into warrant articles at that point. Um, can, can we do 4.30 on the 9th? do 4.30. On the 9th? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I think so. Is that, like you have a real job that you have to show up for. Yeah. <laughs> not retired yet. <laughs> Did I'm you want to meet the following possible. week, too, or just? Uh, yeah, so, okay, okay, so we'll do 4.30 on the 9th. On the 9th. Okay, and then the following week, what does that look for people? So 4.30. Um, well, the 15th would be good for... I think we already had it scheduled for... That's the holiday. 15th's a holiday. Yeah. We can't do it. Day. Yeah. That's a holiday? It's like Patriot's uh, Day. Patriot's Day. Is it? Uh, 15th. Yeah. Okay. So the 16th. No, we always get an extra day because Patriot's Day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's true. I can do the 16th. 16th? Does that work yeah. for people? Yeah, don't forget. We Is there some other meeting on the 16th? No, but on the 18th, we have an info session. So Remember we should, I asked so we should guys meet on the 16th if we can, right? Yeah. 16th? Can we do five okay. for that one? At five. 16th at five. For the town meeting. Town meeting. <laughs> 16 at five. You won't be here. 16th at 5 p.m. And then what, when is the, the 18th is? When you were is, in an elementary school meeting, I don't What know. time is that info <laughs> session on the 18th? Do you know? I don't have a time, but I'm guessing it's going to be about 5.30 or 6 o'clock. That would be my thought. Six-ish. So it's on the entire town meeting, so the Warren. Okay. But the back, budget will Back to the 16th, what was the time? 5. 5, 5 p.m. We, we don't know the time on this. The 18th. I'm guessing it's going to be 6 o'clock, but don't quote me. In its current location. Yeah. Last. Okay. I think we did it hybrid last time. We did it. Julie, I'll Are we away. doing the 18th? Or 17th? 
16th. I think the 16th. Select board is meeting the 17th. So we're not. We're meeting the 16th. Right, but we're not meeting the 17th. No. Right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any? I've lost my agenda. So That's fine with me. Of me. I just want to be on the cruise with Margaret. You know. So. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right. We can no, 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 we're not talking about that. Um, okay. Uh -huh. Anything? Uh -huh. I, I think we're done. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? All right. We've adjourned at 7:47 p.m. Motion to adjourn the select board meeting. Yes. The second. Yeah. Yeah. John yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion to close the capital improvement planning. Tim Hill GI. Trevor McDaniel and I second. <laughs> There's nobody here to second. No. So you're going to just do it. <laughs>